is a little bizarre. There are some deep plots. <laughs> some deep plot lines, but the Matrix fans say it's going to be great. Some people who saw Sneak... People who saw Sneak Peek said, Sneak Peek said they loved it, and really, we had a little fun with this tonight. The Matrix Reloaded promises out-of-this-world special effects. And after anxiously awaiting the sequel, some Atlanta fans are a little out-of-this-world. Nigel, a runner. No pointer, runner. Stevens, agent. Stevens, agent. Stevens, agent. Stevens, agent. Stevens, agent. Simon. Stevens, agent. Simon, a runner. Stevens, agent. Simon, a runner. Stevens, Stevens, agent. Simon, a runner. Stevens, Stevens, agent. Freeman, 713. I, I am a signal. sentinel. Oh! Welcome to the show! Hey, everybody. How's it going? How's it hanging? What's Yo. up? How you doing? How you living? Ah, we're here. We sure we love you. We are here. We come in peace. Oh, we come. With the Bossa Nova beats. We come to susser your talk. I like the sound of that. I know. Randy was talking about it in the chat. It sounded fun. I could suss some Todd right about I, that, now, you know what I'm saying? What I was, that's what I was saying. Sussy bussy in my Toddles uh, tubular, feeling fine on a Wednesday night. We are playing a little game here called Deus Ex Human Revolution. Another entry into the fantasy uh, cyberpunk world that I love so much. Let's, uh, let's see. I think we've streamed this once before. Mm -hmm. We're definitely going to get into Eva. Brian... My King Lord Brian is here as always. Thank you to be. How you doing? Thank you here with the drip on with the oh, Lizzie. Yes. Is that if Nickelodeon? You believe it's Disney. It's Disney. But you good. got a picture perfect plan. Nickelodeon's really going pool. through it right now, but Disney's okay, right? Because Dan Schneider is a gross man. <laughs> yeah, we're not showing feet tonight in honor yeah. of uh, you know the victims. I'm not shooting uh, porn without <laughs> cocks of uh, Ariana Grande putting her foot and toe in her mouth. I don't. Like, I don't spraying own spraying bottles of water on her face like cum shots. I don't own a foot shaped pool, uh, and I don't have the actresses from my television show come over and film in it on. Uh, off days. You know what's crazy is that, like, it was just, it used to be normal. I know. That's the one thing is, like, we could really say, like, there became a point where everyone was finally like, yo, enough. Like, yeah. enough of this pedo shit yeah. in fucking Hollywood. Let's fucking purge. <laughs> we need a purge. We need a human revolution. Oh, God. Uh, and it's happened. Uh, we're going to talk about iCarly and more. Uh, we're going to talk about Ava in theaters. We're going to talk to you, our oh, yes. Discord. If you want to call Discord in. Discord is open. The Nightbot, I'm sure, will do the damn thing. I will. We will talk about wrestling, because I have now finally seen... I had to buy the damn thing. I should have been buying it all along, right? I, I mean, I always do buy them. <laughs> 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 Revolution, the AEW oh, yeah. pay-per-view. Uh, it, Bleacher Report, I got it to work okay on my phone and then casting it to a TV. That seemed to work. <laughs> but, oh man, we, we got to talk about that. The hardest hitting match I've ever seen in my life. Kanosuke Takeshita versus, uh, Will, by God, Osprey. Uh, that and more tonight. Uh, this game, like I said, we've played, I think, once before, a long time ago on the PPS. And I remember this is one, like last week, when... Thanks and shout out to our Bahomi Slime. What up? Garbage main. The garbage main is back in Canada. Uh, and I, I just got word everything. He had a great trip. 
America treated them well. Even those those the Dinsians in the streets of Los Angeles didn't taint our poor boy. Uh, and good for him. Uh, the yeah. the game though we played the thing I had played previously, and I remember it's like God, this didn't go well the first time I played it. I mean, who's to say it didn't go well last week? But I had fun. <laughs> this now is another one that uh, I really, Brian, I remember like not having a good time with this one. Yeah. Like, couldn't get going. This is the one you guys made a video for, right? Couldn't get started. I don't remember making a video for this one. It's the one where Rocco's running around hacking computers and you guys are... Uh, or maybe it was just Deus Ex I think it was general. just Deus Ex okay. I, I, I know that hacker gif it went like crazy viral. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna do shirt, easy. I'm doing the shirt. Easy, whenever man. you guys bring that back, I love the detail. If listen, if you ever want to know how special your hacker shirt is, look at the view count. They update it to whatever it is at the time of yeah. Printing. Each time we reprint it, we Every update time the it's view printed. count. It's great. I think that's again <laughs> Mega Sixty Four is in the details. Yeah. So back to this game though. I think this is worth giving another shot. Yeah. And I know it's very a cutscene heavy game. That's right. Uh, you can walk around and talk to almost anyone once you are finally, like, let in. Um, so I'll try to play along, uh, but we're going to just kind of, like, talk over everything. I'll fill you in on what's happening. Actually, I don't know because I have famously never played – well, I should say I have never played the famously – Highly coveted original game Deus Ex. Me the, neither. The PC version, uh, which was like in the '90s, right? I gotta get, I gotta get on that now that I have the Steam Deck. I gotta, I got no excuse. It's a good idea. I want to talk about Steam Deck too. I've been fucking with that for a lot of last like week. Oh really? Yeah, and I haven't been playing anything. I'll get to it. <laughs> I've been, well, no, I've been spending I, hours on it, and I'm not playing anything. It's a it's a pretty impressive device when you think about what it can do. Like it's basically yeah. it, it, it could anything. be a whole home fucking remote control if you wanted it to be. Yeah, I bet know? there's an app you could just download that does that. You know, like a universal controller. I'm sure, right? Uh, the the thing is very versatile, and I've been teaching myself how to use it a lot uh, more efficiently. Yes. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, but uh, I will I will just get back into this. Uh, I wouldn't know what was my salient point that I was getting to. It was probably something Talking about important. how you didn't play any of the Deus Ex games before. Oh, yeah. So where we come in with this main character, Adam, I don't know. He seems to, like, run some company. And then, like, terrorists, like, bomb it or whatever. And then that's what's going to happen to us. And we get all human... Re then, then we get all these, like, um, upgrades. Is that what it is? Okay. I, that's what happens in this game. Like, right out the gate, it's very heavy lore dump and, like... You know, having played Cyberpunk now after I bought this back, uh, when did this come out? In 2000 and it's PS3, 2011. So like, having played Cyberpunk since this, sure. I think I have like a better understanding of that world and how everything works now. Yeah, that does and help. And this, how this type of game, I can see how like, wow, this type of game was like, there's a lot crammed into this game. I think that's why I always got overwhelmed and I never finished it. Especially because, like, the DualSense 2 or whatever, DualShock 3, sorry. Yeah, that's the 3. This one had all the pressure-sensitive shit, and this game uses that, too. Yeah, it's just it was just like, idiot. It's, this game is overloaded with shit you can do. Yeah. Something wrong. It makes, uh, it makes use of the actual triggers. PS3 switched R2 from a button, which at first I'm like, this is going to suck. To into triggers. actual triggers, which was, trigger. has been the standard for them since. Yeah, and I speaking love of. them now, man. The, the dual sense is still that was the best that controller, was the period. But this discovery, like, Adam, in terms of overall so love of the going? controller, so what's the problem? dual sense. When I'm using the Steam Deck, that's what I'm playing on, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm the fact that you, it, yeah. typically. Oh, I, love I mean, I've been using it handheld lately. Is this guy gigantic? What is happening? Probably. Wait, was he on TV? Oh, I think he's just on a big monitor. Oh. You and your team ready to go, Megan? <laughs> I was like, Almost what the fuck? We're just rechecking data. Uh, we'll make it but uh, yeah, here's... Yeah, he's on a TV. I thought he was just a giant guy. Because look at how his head's behind the... Yeah. Something in the foreground. It, it looked like he was standing at a desk. <laughs> yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't paying attention either. Come on. So this yeah. is, I guess this is sometime after the first game. I'm not all, like, upgraded because I haven't gotten almost killed, uh, almost, almost blown to death, blown uh, to bits. Oh, FPS, I'll never play it. Bro. Dude, I was on the store today for PSN real, real quick before we get into some of the other stuff. I want to play yeah. so many more horror games. Oh, but they're all first person. And they're all first person, man. Like, nobody wants to take a, I mean, I don't want to say nobody, 
but it's very rare for a company to want to step out of that and make a horror game that's third person, let alone stepping out of a prefixed idea of a third person horror game and making it a retro throwback to a Resident Evil or whatever, which I'm not against because there's a game that. coming out called Crow, Crow Country that looks really cool. Um, and there are a few other ones. like I think there's one about like Alice, like based around Alice in Wonderland, like throwback games with with uh you know uh blocky graphics um, okay but again it's like that's why i think i like callisto protocol so much they they came out and it's like here's a third person horror game huge space horror game like and it really kind of pushes the boundary yeah of, i like callisto protocol of, yeah of, of the game like it had i had that cool timing kind of rhythm mechanic yeah it, later on i'm like oh this is kind of like playing punch out you know like Learning the yeah, moves, yeah. and then people. I think people just didn't get far enough in the game. When once they figured out that basic thing, it was one of those things where it's like, "Hey, man, you're running drills. We're teaching you that the basic core of this game is that you got to remember to dodge, dodge mm -hmm. and run. Don't mm -hmm. just plant like any other third-person shooter." And like once you play the game in the way that they've taught you, or once they once they once they are finished teaching you that, the fucking fights get hard, man. They do. They get fucking really hard. Really. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, um, and again, that's my game of the year from two years ago. This game, I uh, remember also having a very necessary cover uh, mechanic. Yeah. And you need to get in cover, and you need to stay in cover, and, you know, um, I was not good at that, you know. I remember Gears was, like, the first thing to ever introduce that to me was Gears of War. Huh. And it's like, holy shit. So fucking necessary. Like, you will die. You will not get to level two if you're not using the cover and just pot shotting in gears. Yeah. Um, oh, I do have an update. Oh. We had talked, Brian, about the, the winnings. From, oh, yes. From the PPS uh, champion, myself here, who won the Board Game Olympics. Well, the winnings were deposited into my Amazon account. Yesterday, I said I was going to do it, and yesterday, I did it. I pulled Get the trigger, I got the CPU, yes. motherboard, yes. and a cooler uh, radiator for the Intel 13th gen baby. Bro. Uh, sit down. Uh, yes. We're not, we're not going to have any more of these high CPU usage errors anymore, because now we got 24 motherfucking cores. Yes. Right? I, think, I think I got like four cores right now. We got eight primary cores, and we're getting 16 uh, E cores, whatever that is. Like extended, some other cores. I don't know. Baby, it's going to be so sweet. Woo! We're going to be blasting off. Fucking no time. So hopefully, there it's in the other room. Hopefully, I'm going to spend it. tomorrow upgrading this machine, and um, I, I'm crossing my fingers everything goes well. Using the same boot drive, using the same M2 storage drive. Um, you should be good to go. I think I should be good. I don't think I'm gonna be like down in USB ports. I have a big hub in case. I think everything should be good. Yeah. Uh, so that's gonna happen. That. Uh, that was a pretty expensive. I don't buy myself stuff a lot, and I certainly don't spend over a thousand dollars on myself like ever. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it was a little over that. Nice, dude. Uh, but it's gonna future-proof me. I think I bought a big and fucking heavy enough CPU for a while, um, and I get to reuse the DDR4 upgrade that I did earlier last year or something. That won't go to waste. What else? I get to reuse the video card, almost everything, the case, the tower, the power supply. Yeah. I mean, fingers crossed. To get in there and something might be weird with the power supply. Although I'm going Intel to Intel, so it should all be it the same. Be, yeah, it should be a problem. Yeah. Any any new power supply is going to be better than whatever you had on this one, so the, it should it should be fine. No, I did not get a new power supply. We're going to be using the old power supply. Oh, yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, I mean, as long as you've never. I don't had think any motherboards have it. changed that much in the last like five years. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal, especially because you're not playing games off of it. Yeah, it depends on what wattage you're drawing and all that shit. But I, I think I think we'll be okay. Because if I even open this up and look in there, uh, I can't see it. I wanted to see what. Oh yeah, it's a Z270. So I'm in a 700 serial now. Okay. And those are the 270s. 
I think it's all aces. Hopefully I don't have to <laughs> redo the mounts like on the inside of the case. Yeah. It's Asus going to an, a new Asus, a 700 series. It should be fine. Should be the same mounting holes, I think. Yeah. Yes, Everything I mean, again, looked... There, there might be, like, small changes, but I don't think it's that. Everything looked pretty compatible, uh, and then I, like, double-checked by trying to buy all of the units on a different website mm -hmm. that has a compatibility kind of, like, shopping cart. You know, like, Newegg has that. It'll tell you, like, hey, these... You're trying to buy a motherboard that doesn't go with the processor. Oh, nice, yeah. So and that checked out. I think I think I'm gonna be good. It's just nerve wracking, man. And that I guess brings me to uh, I've I've just almost feel like uh, I I I feel like confident that I'm about to be upgrading this PC because I've spent so much time working on my Steam Deck in desktop mode, trying to get once they announced uh, about a week ago I saw it a static camera angle a classic mode for resident evil 2 remake have oh, you seen any footage I, I did hear about this yeah this i haven't seen the footage though revel oh man it, it it like revolutionizes already that game was fantastic but now to put in those classic camera angles uh with the if you remember it came with the original soundtrack too. right oh wow. so i was like oh shit steam sales going on this is i've always wanted to learn how to in mod. the mid 20s we saw god uh, I've always wanted to learn how to mod, so here's the deal. I'm gonna fucking, I'm just gonna go for it. It's nine bucks on Steam. Uh, bought the game. Now went through like multiple steps, and that's something that I had never really dipped my toe in. Uh, wow. Modding a computer game, and it was fucking complex. Like there were parts where it's like, okay, open up this file and now add this line of code perfectly right here wow and it's kind of like vague and the tutorials are like not the best but i've gotten like i've gotten like all the way to step four to where like this should work which was like okay install the game then install re framework and you have to run the game at least once before you do that okay i got framework running then you have to do this fucking something called Fluffy Mod Manager. Okay, I got the Fluffy Mod Manager, Fluffy 5000. I got that on the Steam Deck. Now I'm running that, and that's where I can, like, turn on what mods I want. Now I've downloaded the classic camera angle mod. It shows up in there. Wow. I've turned it on, but now I'm at this point where it won't work. Ah. I load the game, and the RE architecture whatever like overlay is like over the game but then there's no options to turn on classic cameras or anything it's like the default huh. menu but none of the mods are turned on so now i'm at this point where it's like okay what did i do wrong along this fucking multiple step excursion uh i actually got it to a point where i was experimenting and then i got it where the game wouldn't load at all <laughs> In uh -oh. desktop mode or in fucking Steam Deck mode. Then uh, I went in, uh, deleted some files and reversed that. Now it's it's loading again. I upgraded a compatibility like video driver that's supposed to work better, but it's still not. I don't know. I'm I'm now almost. Well, I was late coming here, Brian, because I was like I was like determined. I probably <laughs> sat with it for four hours today, just installing and trying to read and. You know what's happening now and look at tutorials on my phone while I've got the Steam Deck here. And... You know the code. 0451. 0451. Now hurry up. Okay. That's cool. Uh, 0451. I'm going to use the elevator here. I think on the last PPS, we just couldn't get this far. What? Use. O. Square. Four. What is? Oh, there we go. 451. You know the code. There you go. Thanks, Adam. Uh, so that was like, I think like a week ago I started fucking with this. Maybe two weeks ago. And little by little, like while Trish is watching her trash TV, it's like I don't care what fucking Vanderpump Rules kids are saying. Yeah. I'm just like, tune that out and get on. Because I want to spend time with her while she's up before she goes to sleep. She's got that opposite schedule of me. So it's like, uh, there's like little times in the afternoon. But uh, it's few and far between, so I take advantage of it. Controller reconnected. Go wireless, baby. 
Um, he's got like the G36C, it looks like. Huh? I forgot about the third person cover. Yeah. This and Operation Raccoon City had that, and a uh, James Bond game de developed by Activision also. Had that as well? Yeah, third so. person cover mode, but then first person shooting. Yeah, it's very interesting. Oh! Very interesting. Reload Adam. Uh, and I'm crawling. Oh, God, that's even a tighter zoom. Oh, there, there we go. There you go. Oh, how do I get up? There we go. Uh, so, yeah, like, maybe two weeks ago is when I just said, fuck it, I'm going to start. When the Steam Summer Sale ha happened and that trailer, I think you brought it up. Did you want to show that? Hmm. Did you still have that oh. game trailer up? I, oh, you uh, don't have it up anymore. It's fine. I have, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was another video. But I didn't see, like... Yeah, if they haven't seen, I'll show you guys what I'm fucking talking about. It Once I just saw how this played out, it blew my mind and made me go like okay i need this now is this it? uh yeah play that like from uh some point in the middle maybe right here okay it so after we get through the cuts yeah Boom. here we go so full screen that baby it like he's got also like a costume that's different what no that was that that's was the a, initial costume that was the initial right? costume yeah i forgot about that but this is kind of cool man oh it's like, so cool and it added laser auto aim so because it's really hard it would be impossible to hit your enemies with this camera no. mod yeah. because the game isn't made for that right but uh they added like auto aim and a laser sight that makes it way easier wow. to hit your targets so it's actually playable in this way um the controls are like tank controls. I guess they're slightly clunky, but... Uh, I mean, so are tank controls. Yeah, exactly. I, I, oh, no, my poor man. Um, but this is the first time, like, even all the Metal Gear Solid Five mods that came out over the years that I would always watch videos of never got me to get into modding. But now yeah. I think this is, like, the first time where I'm like, okay, I made a Nexus Mods account. I'm fucking downloading this thing. Uh, I just got to get it to work. And I would, now, I would absolutely replay. Now I want to play it on the PPS that way. Yeah, for sure. I would absolutely replay that game in, in that mode. I That's wonder if so anyone cool. in the chat has fucked with it, uh, or got it working. Um, if you have, yeah, fucking DM me and Fuck. tell me, tell me what I'm missing. Cause I just, I'm kind of, I'm at an impasse where I've read every tutorial on Reddit. And on Steam. I've looked at all the videos of how to do this as well. Dude, I've got the most wicked, like, nose hair itching the shit out of me. Oh, my God. I'm going to die. <laughs> oh, is that a cat hair or a fucking... I'm so fucking pissed. Could be. Oh. There, it's gone. Oof. What's okay, great so is that it probably out. also doesn't take a lot. Like, it, it'll look good on a Steam Deck because of the fixed camera. And the character model is now shrunk. Yeah, so... Because it's pulled back. Yeah. So it's not right. So it's not um, it's not rendering, or it, it renders. You don't just need it at 4K. Thing. It's like it's yeah. fine at 1080 because your character sprite is now pulled back. Even I mean, even if it is again, a fixed camera means it doesn't have to render anything else but what you see. Oh, I see what you mean. I bet you it'll conserve a battery life playing it that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, so that right, like, and that's the other thing you can do. Like on the Steam Deck, you just got the ability to to play it. Tweak it. It yeah. should be a PS. Uh, it should be comparable to like a PS4 Pro basically is what this what i've heard about the steam deck, a deck? okay yeah. which is fucking incredible hey buddy so what's up oh look out dude look out oh fuck Colonel even if Kurtz. it's 720 you know <gasps> for the screen itself Holy like shit. if you render out oh this is like my company this dude's doing i, I guess what's his problem seraph is the name of my company uh-oh not so is that bad seraph well i yeah, assume it's I like a uh, seraphim Oh, dude, yeah. He well, hand of God is Deus Ex, so the Seraphim kind of. We're in hands research. They do. They. I'm about to get these hands once he cuts my real, real Adam hands off. What's his name? Adam? No, Isaac. <laughs> Who else is Isaac? The Dead Space dude. Yeah. Fucking Doctor Radnar shit over here. Okay, can I use the PC? No. Oh, objects that I need to. Moving objects. Hold. Select? Oh no. Square? This some is a tutorial. Ha! Ah. Good for me. Uh, we do have, I see, some waiting room callers. Sure. Um, you want to talk about modern Steam Deck <laughs> games and frustratingly getting stuck because it won't load? Uh, you want to talk about upcoming Boysenberry Fest? Oh shit, it's on my. 
calendar, baby. You yes, want to talk is. about uh, End of Evangelion in theaters? I know Kristen saw it. We do. I am so fucking pissed. Kevin saw it too. He he was like, "Wait, Shinji's a bad guy?" Uh, no, he knew that. Kevin's never seen Evangelion. Hi, Kristen. Hi. How's it going? How the hell are you? Oh my God, I am great. I'm a little bit emotionally shaken up. You of course, just got but, you out know. of the theater, correct? Yeah, new PFP yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. So it um, all came tumbling down. Oh, it was so good, <laughs> and like I'm so proud of my theater. They were on their P's and Q's. Yeah. It was that's fantastic. Good. Like, oh, that's nice. Every we theater. had like some little stragglers that came in like right before the first scene, and so like I was thinking because like I went by myself. I was oh. like, oh, sweet. Like, I'm going to have, like, a seat to put my bag in. And then, oh, like, yeah. this dad and his son come, like, running up the stairs. Well, and I was like, oh, shit. With your dad. I don't want to see that yeah, movie with my but, dad. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. But, uh, like, the dad, like, whispered or, like, kind of, like, grumbled to his kid. I don't know if he did it, like, on purpose for, like, me to, like, hear. But he was just like, there's too many damn people in this theater. Uh, it's like, Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, it Chill, is God. Um, wow. But yeah, like, wow. but before they ran up, uh, like all the previews and stuff. Uh, so the new Ghostbusters film's coming out. Yep. Yeah, That's that trailer, crazy. they're that... finally showing podcasts. They've been hiding that little annoying kid podcast. Uh, but now they are forced <laughs> to show him mm -hmm. in the new trailer. And I thought we were getting out of this with podcastless, but he's back. Um, I did not watch Afterlife, which oh, I didn't? know, I know, I need to. Yeah, I need. You don't to, need but to. These movies are kind of not. I, I mean, they're. F I'll see them. This one. They're this just. This one kind of has me interested. I mean, uh, why? <laughs> I mean, well, it has uh, me interested too. Because Annie Potts, Annie Potts, I want to see Annie Potts. I do like That's Melnitz all. in uniform, and yeah. and it's we're yeah. getting we're definitely getting more. I'll tell you right now, like Bill Murray's the lead here, right? And the last movie, he only shows up at the end. Oh, the, that's the so last funny. like ten yeah. minutes is all. Uh, so yeah, I think we've we've got more Murray on board this time. He's playing along. He's playing ball game. He loves. And a good ball uh, we get to see Ray stances uh, his like uh, metaphysical shop, which I'm really excited about because I did play. That was in the game. Uh, that spirits within game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. I I really the, like Ray's that. Like I remember bookstore is gonna have like first yeah. time it's on film. So that's something nice. directly taken from like games. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and like there was, I found like a real like not a real photograph of it, but like a, I guess like a set photograph of it. I don't know. It was also really cool seeing um, Slimer. Hook and Ladder Eight. On the street. Well, yeah, but like Hook and Ladder 8, like I remember the first time that I went to New York City when I wasn't like with Chorus, like, you know, I was well uh. out of high school. Like I made the pilgrimage there. I was like, this is holy land to me. Like this is like, this is like my number one favorite movie ever since I was a kid. Like I had to go see it. And they like, if you like got on your tippy toes and looked in the window, you could still Ow. see like the actual like plastic, like, you know, Ghostbusters sign that they had wow. on the side of it for like the original. Film. Yeah. So I was really excited to see that. Dude, so that I got did. me in a good mood. And then there was like a Sam Raimi trailer. Did y'all see oh. that? I no. don't. It's think like we Boy got Kills that. World. No, we didn't nope. get that trailer. I'm it's very so excited campy and weird. It's just Love Lies Bleeding yeah. this Friday, though. Oh my god. I've heard mixed reviews on that one. I'm not gonna lie, but oh, really, I would Probably go into good. it with an open mind. Yeah. If you hear mixed reviews, but, I tend to think then I, that I'm gonna like it. Mixed yeah, in. like, yeah. obviously, like, especially, like, considering the source of, like, at least two people that I know that I saw tweeting about it, and I was just like, well, you don't really get it, <laughs> like, <laughs> even though, like, that makes me Maybe sound so fucking pretentious. You. Yeah, you know, sit this one out, buddy, it's okay. Your yeah. Marvel movies will be back in the theater soon, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, Ghostbusters um, is there for that. No shame. You know? uh, yeah, you yeah. know, that Ghostbusters movie, it just... Like the last one, it's like, man, I have such little expectations, but I will definitely go see it. Do they just throw scientists off the fucking... Yes. Wow. <laughs> well, you Rude. guys also go see everything, so... Rude. You know, yeah, it... me and Trish go do see everything. That's true. There's this new movie um, I'm halfway through that I got. Trish bought it on Instagram. Uh, not on Instagram. What am I talking about? She bought it on uh, Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. And she's like, hey, I saw this movie. Mm -hmm. I think you would like it. Bill Burr is in it, and that's why she said I'd like it. And uh, <laughs> and I start it, and it's called Drugstore June, and I'm like, 
I need to tell her I haven't told her yet, but it's like, babe, I think I would like this because every comedian I know is in this movie. Like, it, oh. it it's a little Esther movie. It's written and stars uh, Esther Pazvitsky, who I was a big fan of, uh, the Esther and Brode podcast back in the day. Um, but uh, our friend Jason Cryer made some merch for little Esther's. Uh, oh, shit. One of, her, one of her tours back in the day, too. Um yeah, Bobby Lee's in it, fucking Miss Pat's in it, like every comedian I've like been turned on to an Amazon release? from podcasts is in this movie Drugstore June. Yeah, it's an Amazon release. Whoa. Amazon doing big things. Um, Amazon is. You have to spend the I'll money. I'm they excited the about the Fallout show. Yeah, bad Bobby in it. I am. Bad Bobby Lee, yeah. No, oh, oh, Bad Baby. Yeah, bad baby. that is why Trisha said no, I wanted to watch it. She's like, Bad Baby's in it. I was like, wait, do you mean Bad Bunny? She's like, no, Bad Baby. I was like, who the fuck's that? She goes, oh, the Catch Me Outside girl from Dr. Phil? <laughs> like, oh, oh yeah, God. her. Baby. I thought it was Bad Baby. She, she, it's Bad Baby. Yeah, it has like an H in it. It's like, yeah. Like, uh, she that's is, crazy. Uh, She's got an acting career. No shit. I've been she, saying that wrong forever. She plays a weed store counter girl like what a perfect no role. shit she's, she's only I was just this. <laughs> he's got like the fucking longest nails and she's just <laughs> with her yeah. accent and everything no. oh it's oh, good it's, so far I'm, I'm loving this movie but that's funny yeah i recommend drugstore june bad baby and i'm only halfway okay, through i'll check that out yeah if you check out her only fans you're a pedophile um, um pretty much that's creepy her. speaking of her. creepy according to her yeah, who has the OnlyFans. She, oh. Is that a quote from yeah. her? She what said, a badass. Because she knew that anybody who would know her knew her when she was a kid. Cash me outside. How about and that? And it's controversial. So it's not like this this woman doesn't know how to do it. How about that? Yeah. How about that? Like, yeah, that's pretty. I mean, that's pretty dope that she said that. But also, like, that's just <laughs> everything that you just said is insane to me. She is uh, um, really crazy. following in the footsteps of some of the most shocking entertainers out there, yeah. like of their time, Eminem and Marilyn Manson. And uh, like, he it like could go back, back as far as the rants. Beatles, uh, you know, tequila. wearing their hair long. It's like this opposition to culture that's so different. You know, it, it, this outlier comes along every once in a while. She is like one of those. And also, you you tuned me on to, uh, what was her name? Sexy Red, Brian? Oh, yeah. She's another Red one. Reds. Hell yeah. We love Hell Red yeah. <laughs> we love Sexy Red. We must stand. They're um, outliers of. Uh, her and Sukiana, baby. Pushing culture yeah. into a new direction. Sukiana gets so much nut, you could call her an elephant. Whoa. Somebody better call Joe <laughs> Biden. She wants to suck on the president. Whoa. Those are her lines in that song. God. Swallow so she much nut, she should be an elephant. What a gal. From elephant. Like, tell, tell me that it is not the most... People are like, oh, whatever. They laugh at it. That is clever as fuck. Elephant Funny, is right? the it fucking really is. political... It really is. ...symbol Party. for the Democratic Party. So <laughs> it takes so much no, that I should Republican. be an elephant. Well, either way. No, isn't it Republican donkeys? I think you, it's backwards. Do I have it backwards? Either How do way. I kill? How do I do a stealth? Uh, GOP. Stealth uh, him! She be gopping and sopping. Uh, you're right, but either way, I just fucking love it. There I you love go. it, dude. Don't forget that her <laughs> that, that that fucking sexy red's coochie pink and her booty hole brown. All right. <laughs> yes, of uh, course. We don't forget Iconic. it. Iconic. Don't forget Iconic it, guys. Behavior. I tried to stealth kill that guy. Wouldn't let me. You snuck up behind him and you had the, like the the laser sight like right on his butthole. You yeah, his booty hole then. brown. His booty hole bloody. Yeah, his yeah. booty hole would have been red. <laughs> his booty hole about to finally sexy. relax. Uh, Only one time in um, your life, your 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 fucking butthole is not clenched. In upon death. Upon death. It's the only uh -huh. muscle that at rest Look is clenched. Look at that. That's a beautiful little trick. He's like, I wasn't able to shoot that guy in the cover. Yeah. But as soon as I drop out of cover, my reticule stays there and I can fucking nail him. Like, there you go. See how that works? Beautiful what? little hack there. Um, now, Ooh, wall hacks. we've talked about a few movies here, but the real one, the one you just got out of. How yes. I, I can only describe the ending as <laughs> like a surreal, awkward, existential, mm -hmm. like shuffle out of a dark room with all your friends because we went and saw it 
Brian, we had a whole row to ourselves. Yeah, right? pretty much. There pretty was like much. ten of us there. I think so. It was what? It was uh, Rocco, you, me, Johnny, Kevin, Sarah. Yeah. Jasmine. There was like yeah, seven of us at and, least. And the uh, the credits roll in the middle of that movie, <laughs> in between episode twenty five and, and twenty six. Perfect. You perfect get the credit. intermission, by the way. Yep, because if you know how long Thanatos is, which obviously, if you've got the soundtrack, you know. Oh, you know, so, Like, you I know. booked it to the bathroom, oh, and, yeah. like, I was, like, in my head, I was, like, singing the song, and so I was just like, yeah, oh, I gotta got pee, time. gotta wash my hands. Got time. It's like, yeah. But, like, it was funny, because, like, I hear, like, all these, like, little snoots just, like, giggling, like, oh, these people are leaving. They think it's over. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I did see a lot and of then, people like, tweeting that. It's like, people might be coming back. Yeah, a lot of people came back. Yeah, to it's it just like hold your horses. Which is what it was for. Don't be judgy. Uh, yeah, but it was what perfect, Rocco? Because you got to empty your bladder for that ending. Rocco pointed out to us on the podcast that it was actually intended to make the ending so abrupt. That was mm-hmm. Ano's not only like reason for putting the credits in the middle, having an intermission, but because at the end of the movie he wanted it to be like it's you know. Pathetic. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, it was and then it's like it's awkward as it's fuck. It's fucking awkward. It's it w- like Shinji's back and regressed fully into his little puss boy form. And oh god, she seeing thinks him he's like that pathetic. on the big screen was uh, great. Oscar says like that, that line screen, like, and just the fucking scathing. lights come on in the room, and you're just left yeah. with you're just left with like heart. Yeah. This Heart is cut a, to black, and then the lights came this up. This is a fucking downer movie, oh. and I love there it. There was for someone that. on the opposite end of the theater, like when it ended, and they said, "Woo!" and like <laughs> that kind of like broke the tension. Because yeah. I thought, like, that's were, the most appropriate. Yeah, yeah. they broke but, the like, tension. Like I remember watching it at awkward. home. Yeah. Yeah, they had. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> like watching it at home, like at the end of it, I was just like, "Fuck!" Like out that's, loud. Like that's like the only response you can have to that ending. Like. I have to go like walk outside. I need to go. I need <laughs> yeah. to think about some stuff. Give, give some hugs out. No I don't music. fucking know. I just thought about the. Movie. I I know. I I put one last kiss on as soon as I got oh, in the car. I was like, you know, I have to. I have to go watch Thrice Upon a Time. I have to watch it so that I have the good ending. <laughs> like, <laughs> I need the. I just. I need Shinji's. Yeah. You know, rebirth. Uh, yeah, I need. I need all of that. Yeah. It's still. It's still. A very existential, still very like oh, look at her. dark, She's dark themes and everything. But like, I don't know. I think like I can handle media like that. Obviously, like, I love it. You, Honestly, you wouldn't be like, a fan of a lot of this kind of stuff. I think yeah. some of my favorite movies have that kind of bummer ending, and also follow a main character who is not necessarily a good person. And they're not even going to say, like, they're a flawed person. They're not even a good yeah. person half the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like those movies. We make fun of, like, <laughs> the guy who patterns his life after his heroes, Tyler Durden, the taxi driver. Oh, God. And uh, the fucking Ryan Gosling from Drive, right? But in an, you yeah. know, we make fun of, like, don't model your life after those guys because those aren't good guys. Uh, but they're damn interesting characters and, like, Proto protagonists. They're like not quite fully developed humans. They're just functioning on reptile brains still. Uh, and sh- I yeah. feel like Shinji's one of those in that movie. Um, at the end yeah. of all throughout Evangelion, and that that uh, that's a movie I've never watched with people. I've only watched that in the privacy of my own like bedroom or house or yeah. Maybe like I've shown that to girlfriends. Mm-hmm. That we How watched the whole series, that? but I don't think I've ever like just sat and watched End of Ava with like Rocco even, um, let alone a full theater because that theater was pretty, pretty, I would say like filled up. Brian, I don't know how you felt. Yeah, yeah like when I bought the tickets for because I got I have so the AMC next to my house it's literally five minutes away, so ah. like of course I yeah like I had to go like it's like the revamped one like it's over by the mall. Um, and it's it's a really nice theater. It's the nicest one that we have in our city. The rest of them smell like piss or have like speakers blown out. It's awful. Like it's 2024. Please get it together. Um, but like I uh, I definitely didn't know. Like because I hit up a few friends and I was just like, well maybe 
maybe if y'all want to go, but I don't really, like, I know that a couple of them like it, but I think, like, one of them went on a date on Sunday, but when I checked the seating for Sunday, I was just like, I'm not going on that, because, like, there's so many seats filled up already. Oh, it was when already full? When I got my full. ticket for Wednesday, Ooh. yeah, when I got my ticket for Wednesday, I was like, oh, shit, like, there's not that many people, like, tight. No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't even check to see like, oh, well, how's it, you know, filling up over time over the next couple days. But it was an almost packed theater as well. Damn. And that's I was good. really impressed. I am glad that this many people are going out to see it because, yeah, I'm, I'm hearing that across the board. Like people's theaters are pretty full. Oh, shit. Got to get out of the way. Yeah. Like oh, and see. that and putting the money in that place, like, you know, it's letting your money talk for you. Like, you know, hopefully you want to yeah. see more stuff like this. More stuff that's, like, so niche. It doesn't get nicher than that. I'm laughing earlier. Oh, yeah. I saw in the comments, people were like, man, End of Ava is not a movie I would show girlfriends. <laughs> I have had not good experiences like that. And uh, you're just dating the wrong women, man, because you got to show it to cool girls, man. <laughs> girls yeah, that really get it. Do. Girls like, that I like anime. Yeah, if you like big mechs and like uh, some metaphysical stuff, if you think biblical imagery is cool, but there's yeah. no meaning attached to it, uh, just, we're just and really good music, <laughs> fucking butchering phenomenal. biblical I wanna imagery. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, I was thinking like on my drive home too. I was like, if I could watch one episode of Ava on the big screen, like remastered, like sound perfect, it would have to be episode nine. Nine. Both of you dance like Splitting you want to win. Of the breast? Oh, like, dance like you want to win. Uh, of course. Yeah, isn't that episode nine? Is I that, don't know. I'm guessing. Uh, you know, I, I, yeah. I can't remember what episode is what, but all the names stick out in my head. I don't know if you ever think about those, Brian. Like, Hedgehog's Dilemma, Splitting of the Breast, Air, Air 3. Uh, why do they yeah. all have such interesting names? I guess that was just Anno's thing. Yeah, no, like, I love it, and, like, uh, but, like, I would love to actually hear, like, that title track, Both of You Dance Like You Want to Win, like, on, like, a big <laughs> studio, like, and that's, like, that's, like, the most, uh, a slice of life E part, even when it comes to, like, the yeah. next fighting, like, the Eva's fighting, like, that's, like, the the episode ending with Asuka, you know, just, like, being, like, oh, stupid, oh, no. you know, and all that, like, I was just thinking, like, if I had one episode to pick, it would be that one, which is a stark contrast to what I literally just fucking saw. <laughs> like, you, need, you know, like, I would like uh, to see them working together. Yeah, you gotta have the good with the bad. You have to have the feel-good episode. For me, that's the episode where you first get all of the children of Ava fighting together against the spider angel. Oh, I forget yeah. which one that one's called, but... Where they're in that shaft, and, like, I think, like, Ray has to, like, hold them up in the shaft, and then Asuka and Shinji are, like, shooting directly up, and they defeat that uh, spider angel. That one I loved, because it was, like, the first time you got all the Ava pilots working together. And defeating an angel. The calm before the storm. Yeah, no. And that's, and that's beautiful, too. Yeah, so, like, maybe, like, we could, like, a fan cut. And you run yeah. out of theater. Seeing and, like, End of Ava got in, someone that's, yeah. in the theater kind of made me go, like, damn, I haven't rewatched a show in a long time. Maybe I should start throwing that on. I'm currently in the middle I of found... End of, oh, what's that, Brian? The cutscene. Oh, well, yeah, that, that mercenary dude apparently, like, in front of my love interest, like, just fucking killed me, essentially. And now they're, like, using technology to bring me back from the dead, but more human than human. Uh, and the credits roll. <laughs> We've gotten past the tutorial stage. But uh, I can't do the stealth kills because I didn't have the upgrades yet. That was what I was remembering from, like, playing the game years ago. It's like, oh, I'm not there yet, though. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. This uh, game does look really pretty, though. I will say that. I, I, I gotta give it to, like, those mid-era PS3 games are kind of like they don't make them like they used to. They're only yeah, starting to again now. Honestly. I mean, are they? There's like outliers, but yeah, because now there are these uh, mid-level studios again. Because all of the fucking studios got bought up. All of the, all of the, the layoffs real, are crazy right all now. All of the real AAA studios I'm got so bought up by happy. the quadruple A studios. You know, like yeah. the giant yeah. conglomerates. And then a lot of people are now, like, you know, making games for the fun of making games again. 
just like this. Also, you know? yeah, like there's like modding communities that are like putting their whole ass into like well, that's you know reskinning and retexturing. Yeah, do I'm you love it? Do you love doing that? that? Yeah, I am. I am. I am successfully not uh, uh, able to play the game yet, but I am. I'm just having so much fun. I feel like some fucking little code monkey who's mm -hmm. trying to hack his fucking yeah. toys. It's more fun than the fucking game. It yep. really is. I've spent 48 I love hours fucking with this, and I still haven't got it to work. But I know I'm going to, and it's going to be so yeah. rewarding. Uh, but yeah, yeah I no, think that's right. the like, best thing about PC gaming. The modding community is adding to some of these outlier games that have been coming out that are, like, I would say, like... And it's funny, it's like... Well, yeah, it's a remake of RE2. Of course, it's it's a remake of the source material that is, like, top tier. So it's good. Yeah. It's hard to fuck that up. Yeah. I mean, it's still the same game. You just control it differently. Yeah, exactly. But and now you can control it the old way. Yeah. And, like, that's because of the modders out I, there. I like, really would. I mean, right? That was something they should have done as part of the original release. I think... I think... RE1 got that. The RE1 GameCube game, I think, has that built in. Well, the RE1 is that's how it is. On GameCube, there it's not a third-person game. It's still that tank controls. Yeah. Is it subsequent releases got upgraded controls? Oh, see, here's me where I have, like, all my no, no, the, mods. The R, so that's kind of been the funniest thing. So they remade Resident Evil on yeah. GameCube, right? Yeah. And then they, they mm -hmm. completely retextured the game, redid all the backgrounds, redid everything. Added Crimson Heads, added, added Lisa Trevor. Added in all the fu the, 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 the needing to burn oh. and, like, all of that. Real quick, hey, just taking aside, so... The story now has uh, got me totally rebuilt like fucking Bionic Man. Yeah. But like my vision is fucked up, so I had to come into my building that we got terrorized at. Oh, I haven't that's been why your back. HUD's all fucky. I haven't been back. Yeah, the HUD's all fucky. And I haven't been back here in like years. Like two years ago, it took me to like heal and upgrade or whatever. And a lot's changed, but they all recognize me and they're like, oh shit. Er Jensen, oh, that's I can't really believe cool. You're here. Uh, anyway, that's what's that's going on. That's really with the cool, game. though. Like making the HUD all weird. Like when we're talking about like modding and like you know uh, fan bases doing certain things, and also in the vein of Eva, that Eva game for the Nintendo 64. Yeah. Uh, so I got a ROM for that, and I got it around like I want to say it was Black Friday last year, and I remember I was playing it like while y'all were doing your uh, midnight stream. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, this is so much fun. But this is really fucking hard to play with a keyboard and mouse because you can't do it. Dude, it's hard to so play like, with a fucking gotta... N64 controller. I was just going to say, so like, have any of y'all played it like yeah. with the N64 controller? Does like I love the rhythm game scene, obviously, because it is one of my favorite songs from the soundtrack. And it's just like a fun little like nice break from everything. Mm -hmm. uh, Magma Diver, I could not fucking get it. But, you know, I was bouncing around from level to level. Uh... It's a I would hard love game to see. To play. Yeah, I would love to do that remastered. Hardware, and I've streamed it here a couple times, I think. Not in this studio, in the I old need to go studio. Mm -hmm. I need to sniff that one out. I would like to watch you play that. It's, I bet it was a lot of fun. It's interesting. <laughs> it's the fighting game one is the one you're talking about, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I remember, yeah, it's like, it just to figure and out the no controls or get to play. Like, it was two-player and I think, uh, man, it was like second studio era. We, we streamed a little bit of that once. Long time ago. Yeah. I love the office. soundtrack on it, though. Like, I definitely have that downloaded. Like, I've got, there's a website where you can just, like, find, like, any old, like, you know, game OSTs. So, like, there's a bunch of, like, older, like, Able ones. I even downloaded the, oh, fucking, there was, like, a visual, not a visual novel, but kind of. It's like where you raise Shinji. Oh, the Shinji but it starts with, like, raising Masato's project. dad. Like, yeah, and I got that. It took for fucking. Uh huh. The Ray I and that, I teaches like, typing. That... There's a lot of Ava huh. games from yep. like that Dreamcast I sniffed them all out. era. Yep. Mm hmm. Um, all the music from it's awesome. Like, I actually have that set up as like my Discord like ringtones if someone oh, hell calls yeah. me or whatever. Like, I would play because uh, I have MIDI versions of those. Which are probably just from that game, because I probably just yeah. got them, you know, around the same time for ringtones. But they they flag the copyright. Oh, they're uh. too they're too oh, close. Boo. <laughs> they're too boo, close. Stinky. So yeah, I've taken them out of the background music playlist. 
Well, it's obvious that you would have them. Also, congratulations on your new video. That shit was awesome. Ah, uh, if video games were... Oh, I'm sorry, if pizza were video games part two. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. No, that's awesome. Uh, I was stoked about that, too. We put that out Monday, and we got to film at... Uh, shout out to a local spot called Dang Bros Pizza. They're actually that's like a, a catering name. That's awesome. pizza company that comes to your event with a pizza oven and a truck and... It's fucking rad. What? Yeah, it's it's that's dope. sick. The uh, the Dang Bros crew hooked us up, and then uh, yeah, it was a fucking real good time, man. And very poignant time to bring back the mm -hmm. the discussion that we brought up in that first video. I it yep. misses Eric Bedore. There's not enough Eric Bedore in this new one though. That's Pepperoni cheese. That's what I think. No, he he is. Whenever he comes in for like those little parts, it's always oh, amazing. Man. But Fucking this video pepperoni. was <laughs> Six months, no what, so good. I love it. I love that so much. Um, but yeah, that video was awesome. And then like when y'all were talking Adam just did. now about like you know the modding communities, like happens. you know actually like putting yeah. in the time and effort to do these things that like because like these big studios are just like. They don't care about the heart and the soul of the game. They just see dollar signs. They just see, like, you know, the end game for them is just, like, let's get that pocket. Let's get that fucking bag. Let's get it. that fucking subscription plan and DLC package down the road. And, Boy, yeah. don't you know I fucking hate that shit. Collector's like, edition. Oh, God. I just, it's I miss so the time obnoxious. where you got a game and maybe it had a fucking patch. But that's about it. Like, that <laughs> PS3 yeah. era. Oh, PS3. 360 GameCube era. It was so good. I should have never gotten rid of my 360 because I had that one. Like, obviously, like all the 360s had the detachable hard drives. Yeah. So like, you could just take that shit with you and like go over to your friend's house and be like, yo, check this shit out. Yeah, I got and my games here. And then you swap here. them out really quick. Oh, God. that That's like, we'll never have that again. Ever. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, different now. The I mean, there's we'll, cloud. Yeah. Like, I can yeah. sign into Brian's PS5 if I go over there and pretty quickly, like, download a, a you know, profile to a game. It's just, uh, you know, the reason why I love holding on to my old hardware. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think, I don't actually know what happened to mine. Like, my only old hardware that I have is my Genesis that I got in 95. Mm -hmm. Um, that's probably it. Anything else that I have? It was inherited from, you know, I have a Wii U. Never purchased uh, a Wii U. I did purchase a GameCube. Don't know where that so went. So you also have a Wii Lost if you have a Wii a U, mood. too. That's what I love about, like, yeah. some of the consoles. Fuck, the PS3 we're playing on right now plays everything mm -hmm. going back to PS1. So I will never get rid of those consoles. No. In fact, like, I yeah, hoard no. those now. Um, Kevin and I gotta me find both. a PS3 controller. Uh, pretty easy uh, because, online. Yeah, I have yeah. one in my closet. Like, I have a PS3 in my closet. I did, okay, I hack. think I fibbed last time when I said that I have, like, the chunky one. I do not. It's the slimline one, but I don't know what's on it. Because I got it from a friend who was, like, upgrading and, like, I got to get rid of some tech. A and slim? so they just brought me, like, we were, like, I think we were all, like, going to, like, a wrestling pay-per-view at our other friend's house. And then they just gave worried. me two bags when I got out of my car. I was, like, wow. I would love... I would love to always be greeted with two bags of old video game tech. <laughs> anywhere I go. That's like on my rider. Like if you're asking me to show up anywhere, just hardware. bring me two old bags. Yeah. Oh, here I love it's it. telling me where I'm supposed to go finally. There Your HUD's still guy. messed up. Tech lab. Found I love it. it. Found it. This guy's going to fix my hub though. Watch. Fix He's, my eyes. My, my ocular implants are twitched out. You got to help me. Yes. Oh, he's got that sassy anime boy hair. He does. Yeah. And I don't need, you know, like, all right, we're playing Final Fantasy Rebirth. I, I was. I haven't played in a couple weeks. So I've been very busy uh, trying to mod Resident <laughs> Evil 2. Uh, <laughs> but, like, you know, those graphics are better than this, but not by much. I don't know. It's still like I'm looking at a cartoon character. Yeah. But that's the oh, medium yeah. that I'm comfortable playing. I like realistic-looking graphics, and these are doing that just because they don't have, like, I guess the cartoony color palette to them. Yeah. Um, 
but the jump from PS3 to like where we are now, I don't know. It's is it that great? I can play those old games and they do not hit like when you would play a PS1 game ten years after it came out. It was like whoa. Yeah, no, that's that's a difficult jump to do because like even if you love the IP, sometimes it's just like I really want to play this, but Jesus Christ, it's hard. And it's a challenge only, to get through this. Now, yeah, some shit did not age well. It didn't, and, and it only now is like oh, cool looking those retro graphics. Yeah. There was a period where it was like yeah. oh, those are ugly graphics. Yes. There's so many games coming out like it like even like I noticed it leaking over onto Steam, but itch.io is a really fun website for yeah, you know downloading cool indie Johnny. games. Johnny downloads mm -hmm. a lot of the itch.io stuff for us like on um, 420 and uh, that's kind of oh, yeah Y'all play those like the scary ones like you did like the typing of uh, the dead or whatever like all those games we like played yeah. Citizen Kane 64 <laughs> That was crazy that uh, is crazy. You know, there's out, a fan Twin Peaks one now. As well. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. We met oh, him out on tour. It was fucking that. dope. Damn. Uh, gave Devs us a physical copy that's as awesome. well. <laughs> well, thanks for calling in, Kristen. I, I'm glad you had a good uh, experience in End of Ava. We had, we talked a little mm -hmm. bit about it on the podcast, but we had someone who was trying to start a sing-along during Comsus or Todd. Oh, I, I sighed so that. big when y'all said that on the stream. Oh, when y'all said that, I was like, oh, you didn't? my no. God. You were one row in front of us, Brian, but our whole, uh, when we talked about it, it was like Sarah, Rocco, Johnny. Everyone was like, yeah, it was about 10 seconds from getting up and, and killing this guy. But uh, he quieted down and, uh, you know, it didn't go. That's Not the fucking Taylor Swift He movie. started it and it was like, he's getting louder. He's <laughs> getting louder because he thinks we can't hear him. We're just ignoring you, dude. And then eventually, like, he, he kind of, like, stopped singing. And we could all just enjoy the fate of destruction Jesus. and the end of the world. Yeah, I know. That, yeah, that whole sequence was phenomenal to see. I got three heart rate uh, uh, notifications oh, you did? while I was watching it, like, on my Apple Watch. Yeah, it was during, <laughs> it was during Asuka's scene, like, when she's just like, That's Mom, crazy. Mom was here the whole time. Like, I, I was emotionally, I did not realize it's that so I would badass. actually, like, get any of those. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my God, like. Oh, I cried. Cool. I, I like silently cried like uh, uh, quite a few times, but it was I, very cathartic. It was lovely. I did the same thing where I'm like, I hope Sarah doesn't see me wiping the tears out of my eyes. It doesn't hit me as I'm hard. I'm so glad Sarah was on the podcast. Oh, Sarah's yeah, it was awesome. great having her. Uh, it doesn't hit me as hard as it used to, but there are the two musical cues that will bring a solitary tear to each eye. And it happens twice. And it happens you just nailed it with, Oscar's uh, mom uh. and and her having a moment at the bottom of the lake where yeah. she, where uh. she then rises <laughs> and so is holding the fucking ship yeah. up in her arms. That, part that, God, that music that was cue, so though, fucking sick. It doesn't Holy hit shit. me until the music starts, and then it's like, oh fuck, dude! If I blink really hard, I can like squeeze a tear out of each eye. Duh. <laughs> and then I didn't wear a lot of eye makeup just for that sole purpose. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna cry. I know that I'm gonna cry. I just like don't know when. Yeah. So th the other one though just is also eyes. you know uh, when Comcessor Todd starts. And oh, yeah. Ray is like embracing Unit One and all of the yeah. vaginal openings in Dude. <laughs> her forehead, Those which yeah. are so <laughs> large They're on so the big screen. They're so vivid on the big screen. Dude. It's like okay, I've seen that in my house a million times, but it's like okay, clear clitoris and Hood. vulva oh, and, yeah. and like j this. Is blown I, up. The motherly so themes big, are strong. You can see it. <laughs> I mean, she's so has, clear. She, like Ray has him in her hands <sighs> as they're. It's as on the stigmata. Yeah, too. The, stigmata, yeah. the stigmata. Yeah, but but like, when it opens up on the head. I'm like, <laughs> holy shit! Yeah, I didn't see that as ex as so explicitly. Her stigmata pink, her booty hole brown. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but you and know, it, you know her. Um, or I will say, there's a scene that I have not seen. Uh, uh, an aspect of in my entire life and I've watched this movie so many times this is my favorite movie but the blu-rays or 4k files that I've downloaded or the original VHS tape that I got never revealed this but during the scene where little baby Shinji is playing on the set of a sandbox yes. with the swing yes and there's the little dolls there and the mother takes them away and then he kicks over mm -hmm. the sand 
uh, nerve Pyramid. headquarters. Yeah. That scene then has this part where it looks like it's very red. It's very colored dark and red because the sun has set mm-hmm. and now the lights in the park are coming on. And there's a scene where they shoot like you're looking, but like you're standing on the ground and looking up at two bleachers, like stadium bleachers on either side of you. It looks like that. There's like, there's like, I never knew what it was. I just thought it was like bleachers on this playground. Right. Yeah. But you can see Shinji looking over the edge. I had never noticed that until it was blown up on a big screen that he is standing at the top of this set or these bleachers or whatever it looks like. I think it's supposed to be the set because everything is like a simulated experience that he had when he was a kid Uh but there's like camera lighting a fucking there's dolls instead of kids that the actress walks off with there's all this like fake film equipment going on so you see him at the top of this set looking down and it gave me a chill i've never noticed him Mm -hmm. there before i just thought it was like a still image and it was so dark up in the top of that screen where he is I couldn't make it out on my shitty copies. Like the U.S. manga DVD is just not that blown <laughs> up. And seeing this yeah. from G Kids on the screen, it's like he he could fall. Like the little boy could fall off that fucking twenty foot ledge, and he's kind of like looking over the edge and kind of rears back and then walks away. And I had never noticed that before. Um, that was just one thing that specifically, like, wow, I I've, I didn't think I would get something new from the movie. Oh yeah, and I did. Oh yeah, I saw watching a lot it in big screen. It was see. fucking amazing. It was perfect. Um, yeah. Before I go, is it too early to get a wheel spin? Oh for you no, boys, we, were, what the fuck? we were anticipating. You Eric know, I never like forget. Spins, but I do, and show to Sean. Bro! Sean loves it. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get a wheel spin in for you right now, Kristen. I'm gonna lock in the timpani. It's been a while, Brian. This uh, is Ve- yeah, this is Dead was... Vector's Thank favorite you. part of the show. That's what I heard. A little bird told me. No, Vector famously hates the wheel spin. But this is going to be a good one, Vec. Kristen, you want a good spin today? We're not showing feet in Always. honor of... I would love a good... Yes, in honor, in honor of... of the, you will not show feet. Trashiness, I think. Well, I we're of consent. So I, I, yeah, I know. And Brian, he does have some beautiful toenails today. I brought, I brought I can see slides. He's too. already in the slides. I'm, I'm hoping for feet. Brian, you He's already have ready. no chill. I'm open for feet. Oh my I'm God. always open for feet. I'm okay. always open vessel to all entities, it's devils, true. demons, demons, spirits. And they can all hear you when you say Vespers. that. Vespers. Why? Why? Who hit? Did I hit the camera again? Probably. Oh no! I think I did when I when I went to the bathroom before the show. I give it a little. I give it a little tappy tap. Give the camera a little tap. Put it back in its a little place. Little love tap. <laughs> all right, here comes a little Kristen. Love place where I will rear mm-hmm. end your ass. Love tap, baby. I don't know those words. Love tap, la la love tap. Here we go. Here we go for all the whammies. Ooh. Story time. Ooh, okay. (laughs) Ha ha. You know you love it. We haven't had one in quite a while, but I found recently my notes app where I have all of my checklists to start the PPS show, mm-hmm. I realized that there's like a fuck ton of topics for me to do stories that I've just forgot over the years. So for you, Kristen, here's the intro. <laughs> Playing two of them at the same time. Reflections <laughs> of the past. <laughs> <laughs> story time at last. Enjoy the live broadcast. Brother, brother, big dude. Big dude. Big dude. Big dude. Big dude. Okay. Uh, I have, I have notes here. First, who knows when I wrote this, but I like that this one is story time. Have better endings. Dot dot dot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember like the first couple story times were like, and then and it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> And yep. then we did that, and then me and we came back from school, and 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 uh, it was it was crazy. And then we did our homework. And it was like, yeah, all right, have better. <laughs> Jesus, it's funny that it's written down here. Have better innings. Uh, skating and cops. Teacher put a hand okay. near her crotch and said, "Do I look like a dude to you?" I've told that one. Yes. We, we've done some of these. Yeah. That did happen to me in high school. Um, 
<laughs> and I did tell the skateboarding, running from the police uh, at the skate park across from Grand Hills High School, and then having dinner with all of the police officers at Tyler's Taste of Texas. Tyler's Taste of Texas. Oh, so do man. I, brother. I, I completely forgot do. about that place that you just brought up. I know. I thought, Recipes. this is a weird side note. I thought, <laughs> I thought how funny it would be to get an El Cajon tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Brian knows, because he lives in San Diego, how funny that would be. But nobody would be, like, they wouldn't be able to tell that you're joking. But here's what the El Cajon tattoo would be. Okay. El Cajon means the box in Spanish. Uh, I would just okay. get, like, a Metal Gear-style cardboard box, and then it would look like, oh, this guy is a Metal Gear fan. Uh -huh. But no, it's, this is my El Cajon tattoo uh-huh or like uh elko <laughs> boulevard is like the famous street right so i would like uh, right instead of the orange on the side of the box it would be like boulevard mm. so it's like the elko boulevard okay. box i don't know i was thinking <laughs> trying to think outside it's a famous street for us here in east Canada. trying to trying to think outside of the el cajon uh -huh. i'm so fucking happy get it um no and then i thought okay I well it. my my favorite sister uh city la mesa the table would i should I get a, a table with a box on it, and then it's like the San Diego special? It's like, where are you from? And it's like, oh, yeah, East bro. County. It's like, you got furniture tattooed on you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got anime tattooed on you. Well, how, what would you do for, like, a Santee tattoo? How do you uh, do that one? The Klansman? Oh, my God, Brian. <laughs> That's so... Wait, what's the name of that restaurant? They call it Clan T for Clan a reason. Clan T for a reason. Jesus now it's Christ. less clanny, but um, Jesus Christ. There's definitely a lot, lakeside? A a lakeside lot tattoo? of white people in, in Santee. Lakeside I think I counted in my high at our high school for my for one of the years that I counted twelve or it was around twelve people who were African American and then like me, like it's a lot different in yeah. 2024. <laughs> it's way different. But Clay T had a bad, uh, you know, all of East County kind of had a bad, uh, I guess this is story time right here where we were from in high school. Well, it's weird. <laughs> had a bad rap. It had a bad rap because it had a lot of immigrant families like myself. You know, like living up in La Mesa and the little townhomes and all these like little military areas that people who got stationed here and then moved oh, out. Oh, and you think like. A little further East County, all these white folk in the 90s are like, we don't like these mm -hmm. immigrants coming over to La Mesa. Yeah. That's too close to us yeah. in Santee. How would, what was the old phrase? Uh, oh, 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 neighborhood's getting a little dark. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. Did you ever hear that? No, no. Because by the time we were there, it was like every other townhome had That's like good. military families. I, I grew up around a bunch of military families. I grew up around a lot of... Uh, Mexican family. He's got Filipinos. a fucking Roomba hooked up to these TVs. I wonder what the fuck he's doing here. It's probably making it suck him off. Um, oh, I like that. That's like serial experiments laying over yeah. there. It's yeah, beautiful. you like old old school tech. Here's a TV stack for you. Um, how, okay. I don't know how they got him like that, but okay. Back back to your role. Uh, we 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 got to find a, a story I haven't told here. Let's see. Uh, I lost my place now. I've got a lot of notes that are interesting. Things for Twilight and Chewie to do. Huh. Um, Go to hell and never come back. Yeah, things I've done. Wow. Yeah, we just don't want to talk to them anymore, really. Thank I've God. actually got lists of games and guests that would be good. How old is this? This is so funny. Uh, let's do... I have jokes written in here. Story time idea. Can't remember <laughs> the guy's name. Oh, this is a good one because I don't think I've told this. I, I looked at these other notes, but I have a note at the end that I don't think I've ever told. And this would be a great story time. I just don't... I got to be careful about how who I name in this. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is great. Uh... <clears throat> Oh, did I also, did I tell the story? I have another list on here um, where I worked in a store at the mall called Toxic Shock. Mm -hmm. And the owner would get mad at me because I would play rudimentary peni over the aux cord. <laughs> in the sound system. Story you've told me or it was like a punk store. So I just thought like, oh, I could play punk music yeah. in here. But she was like, no, like, don't. Like, play 91X. Huh. You like, talked play the about radio. that store. I thought that was a funny name for a store. I but mean, that's kind of like, why, yeah, it's like 
named Toxic Shock. What? That is kind of how I got yeah. in Mega 64, though. Yeah. Because I worked there with Adam, who is Bones from Alabama in the version 2 Super Dodgeball sketch. Oh, yeah. And Adam introduced Whoa. me to Rocco, Derek, and Sean, and then the rest was history. We used Damn. to watch on his laptop at work in Toxic Shock. We used to watch, like, the Mario and the fucking... Uh, Dig Dug sketch, like on FMV or so full, crazy. you know, Windows Media Viewer yeah. or whatever. Back when you had to That's download so them off awesome. the site, yeah, instead of run them on Holy YouTube. Holy shit! Worst mistake of my life. God. Um. Yeah, man, that was a time that was real interesting because I was on strike at Vaughn's. I was oh. working night crew at the grocery store, but I was on strike, so at night. I just picketed, and then during the day, I would work at this mall clothing store, and then I was so exhausted that I would, like, pa- I'd get there early sometimes and then just pass out on the floor of the back room Yeah. until, like, the next, the other employee came, the key holder, and, like, unlocked it, and I'd get up real quick, like, okay, what's up? Um, but I think I've told all those stories. I'm just kind of going through all of them again. Um, God. This one, though, this one's a good one. Okay. Uh, I can't remember this guy's name, and this is probably for a good reason. Uh, but all I remember, he was this, like, metalhead rocker guy. Picture, like, <laughs> you know Andrew's, like, uh, long, flowing drummer hair? Uh-huh. This guy kind of had long hair, and he was, he was, uh, he was into rock and roll. Dude listened to, like, Dio and fucking classic metal God of, uh, 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 Man of War type heavy metal, right? Uh-huh. Um, mm. had, had the battle jacket. Also, he had this fur jacket. And around this time, <laughs> this dude was always wearing this, like, fur vest, which was such a... He's <laughs> like a metalhead going That's around to weird. bars and PB with a fur vest on. Sounds about right. Gets people what talking to you, you know? It gets, hey, what, what's up? It's, a, it's definitely, like, a conversation starter. Um... Apparently, and this these are the notes I'm just kind of skimming because I remember this in chunks. But, like, this was a guy who was, like, new to the friend group. And this friend group uh, was a bunch of people that I had done music stuff with, like musicians uh, who I fucked around with, uh, you know, back in the slow draw kind of era. Um, and this guy was kind of like a new dude to the group, like some of the other homies like brought him around and i was just fast friends with him i had only met him like the the weekend before so he started kind of hanging around all the apartments uh that we kind of hung out at after work and then you know we like i said we were fast friends apparently at some weekend kickback over at one of our homies who didn't live in the apartments but we would go to other people's houses and uh our friend's parents had like a nice backyard and we would go over there Everyone would be drinking. It was like a fucking typical like backyard party full of like twenty year old fucking heavy metal heads, right? Yeah. So everyone's mm-hmm. in their fucking battle jackets and drinking, and I'm <laughs> fucking that. I'm not. I'm still that one straight edge friend of theirs that's hanging out in the backyard, <laughs> uh, throwing axes, and you know we. I think we were. <laughs> I think that we were doing archery too. <laughs> um, just Holy having shit. a gay old time, right? But apparently. This dude who was also invited, the dude who's wearing the fur vest all the time, he did something inappropriate with the, like, uh, our homie's mom who Whoa. lived there. Like, they're hosting all of my homie and our and his friends, like, hanging out. The, the parents have known the whole group forever. But there's this one new guy who's, like, also there. But so far, this guy's been cool. But apparently at this party, he was fucking drunk or something and was in the kitchen alone with with the my homie's mom who lives oh. there it's her kitchen and he like made a pass at her oh she's married no. right oh dude the, the they live the, the husband and wife live in this house together and here's some like 20 oh something year old kid hitting on the mom and i think he said something super inappropriate she just, like, leaves, apparently. That's Whoa. how she went and mm. left. And then, like, got herself out of that situation. Uh, 
no one really knows that this happened. Like, I don't think that the party ended. I think it kind of went on, like, <laughs> the everyone kind of went back uh, the next day. Uh, well, the party ended. We all kind of, like, went back to our separate, you know, places where we all lived. The next day, we were all hanging out at a different apartment where, like, I lived nearby in that apartment. And sure. everyone's kicking it, right? Um... <clears throat> I don't know exactly why I was hanging out with this dude alone. Oh, yeah, now I do. It's the next morning, and I'm, like, just alone in my apartment. Everyone is hanging out next door. Yeah. This guy comes over, knocks on my door, like, hey, dude, what's up? And I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? Wow, you know, good good time yesterday. Yeah, yeah, what's going on? Oh, everyone's hanging out next door, and I just got a... Uh... He had he this dude had all his shit over in this other apartment too because I think he was new to the friend group but also he got kicked out so he was kind of living in, out of on their couch uh, so he had all his clothes and all his like bags and shit there too and they're like yeah uh, everyone over there is kind of like all pissed off like can I come hang out with you what, what's going on and I'm like and I, now I don't know what's happened I don't know what's going on I'm like yeah yeah come on over. Um, come on in you know he's like knocked on my door right right and he's got like he's got like some shit with him and he sits down on the couch and i'm probably like playing like rock band 2 or something and i'm just like <laughs> hanging out i'm like why is everyone mad he's like oh i got too drunk at the party or something but he's not like telling me why or whatever oh, he's no. been in my house now for i don't know two two and a half minutes like i haven't even been able to offer the dude a water uh-huh he's got his fucking fur vest on and shit <laughs> and oh God. all of a sudden my fucking front door to my apartment gets kicked in i'm talking like it's what? never been opened like this before like a cop's fucking bursting through what with a swat team fuck? right it's the dad it's my homie's dad who Whoa. whose wife got uh oh, you know no. hit on hit on the night before by this guy I, that I'm not privy to any of this. And apparently, like, the apartment next door, like, everyone had been hanging out, kind of woke up the next morning, and then, like, people are talking. Like, yeah. Like, my homie's mom yeah. went to her husband and went, like, hey, this shithead kid that you guys invited, that we <laughs> that we had over, said this stuff to me. And I think she told, like, my friend and her <laughs> husband. And now, like, my friend oh my has God. told, like, the other people at this apartment and they've all said like, yo, this is what happened. They're trying to get, you know, info out of them. And that's why he left. I think they were all like, yo, you got to go, dude. You got to get your shit and go. Right. So he walked over to my apartment cause he had nowhere to go, I guess. And, and I not knowing what had happened, let him in. Now I've not gotten the story out of him yet. Cause we've only been sitting in the apartment for two minutes, my place now for two minutes. Homeboy's dad just comes barreling into my apartment, and I recognize him because I know him. So I'm not I'm not too freaked out, but I'm like sitting in a chair, like, whoa. He storms around my couch into the living room, grabs this dude by his fucking vest, no. and just backhand smacks him as hard oh! as I've ever. And I'm he. This guy's in like a like a chair like this. Like I was on the couch, and I'm just like. This has happened in 10 seconds. Door kicks open. Dude storms around. What the fuck did you say to my fucking wife? Boom! Oh this my guy's God. bleeding from his fucking yeah. mouth now. Because yeah. this is a scrawny little, like, 22-year-old guy. And uh, this fucking 50-year-old man just... Ba and this dude was a big guy. Yeah. Backhands, a tough guy. A yeah. mechanic. Yeah. A dude who oh, uh, no. has forearms the size of my fucking calves. Yeah. This guy is instantly Jesus. drawing blood. And he blood. put everything into it. And he put everything into it. And you this could dude, tell. This dude flew back out of the <laughs> chair and crashed into my uh, game case. You no. know that PlayStation case? Fuck. It didn't break the glass. But I'm just like, oh, my God, they're trashing my house. Because now this dude's, like, been thrown out of a chair into glass. It didn't break. But my yes. PlayStation case is, like, rocked. And I'm like, hey, take it the fuck outside. Like, what's going yeah. on? Yeah. And he's like, why are you on this piece of shit in your house? He's now looking at me. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. 
what did you do? I don't know what he did. And I'm telling him, like, <laughs> I didn't know what he did. I don't oh, know why. Shit. I don't know why they kicked him out of the apartment next door. I don't know what he did. What did you do? Uh, they, they, the, the, the guy, like, uh, dragged him outside. I think knocked him around a couple more times. Now I'm outside my apartment and I can see. The fucking homies, uh, all my friend group in the apartment next door, have taken all his shit and just thrown it out on the lawn yeah. of this oh complex. My God. Wow. All his shit in the two minutes that he's been over at my house trying wow. to, like, find safe haven. They've thrown all his shit, and he's sitting there with his little fucking fur vest looking sad as fuck, dude. <laughs> and he's got blood running out his fucking mouth, and my homie's dad just fucking no. leaves. Because he basically grabbed him by the collar, and he says, if you ever say anything, anything to my fucking wife again or come near any of my fucking you know family or any of these people again i'll fucking kill you kind yeah. of shit. like this dude oh was scary my god and then he got in his truck and left and then this dude's like looking at all his shit on the lawn and he's looking at me and i'm just like can't help you anymore bud <laughs> Went back into my apartment, yeah, locked no. the oh door behind me, and I'm texting all my friends. I'm like, "What, the guys? Fuck? I didn't know. I wouldn't have let him in. I didn't know." But Your I had to. All knew, right? I mean, well, they know. Like, oh, yeah, you didn't. You didn't get the fucking memo. But yeah. like, that is what Jesus. happened. Jesus. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, I just want to make sure I hit everything. He was sitting in my living room, hanging out. My friend's dad comes into the apartment, <laughs> without knocking, <laughs> blows the door open. Grabs the guy by the collar of his shirt and slaps the shit out of him a few times. Frozen to the ground, looks at me and says, I'm sorry. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. <laughs> hey, he apologized. He did apologize, though, I remember. Uh, <laughs> I'm oh sorry. God. All this shit was on a pile on the sidewalk. Uh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, That's never, so crazy. He never tried saw to, like, that fucker again. That is the truth of the story. We haven't had a story time in a long time. Yeah, that was Brian. a good ending, Jesus too. Christ. Well, I... I told a better ending. Yeah. Like my notes. Reflections of the past. Yes, Thanks, Thanks Kristen. Story time. Thank you guys. At last. We you sure do love telling kiss. stories. We'll tell them again next time. <laughs> you can have one kiss. Good night. Ah, uh, great caller with As a always. nice long story. Damn, dog. I'm still sitting here, probably running up the game clock. Um, but I'm glad I had that note written down because I yeah. forgot. I had totally forgotten about that dude. I never think about that story, but it's so fucking good. Yeah, like, can you imagine like one of the ripping friends just kicks your fucking door down, comes in, and like beats up a guest of yours, and then leaves? Sorry, and leaves. I mean, fuck then around, find shit, out. All his shit on the fucking lawn. He was fucked. You know, I don't condone. I don't. I, I fuck saying condone. Uh, what did he say to my? Uh, what did he I, say to her? So did anybody ever? Like, I mean, you, you obviously don't know. I think we like, asked, like, like our friend, like, dude, what did he say to your mom? And he's like, I don't, f you know, like, something like, I don't know. I don't know, but maybe, like, He I probably just legit made a pass at her. I'd love to smell that pussy. Like, who he knows? Pro he probably so was, like, happy. legit being like, I would sleep with you if you let me because he's stupid and a fucking kid. I mean, he what were you, maybe He probably said some dumb shit like that, yeah. It, like Who knows? But it was probably. I think it was lewd. I remember whatever it was. It was like pretty lewd. Yeah. Because he was like drunk. Yeah. I mean, he was wearing a fur vest. This so. dude was like. You know what I mean? It's not like the he guy. He was a throwback, man. Well, they don't I, make them like they used to. Uh, again, oh shit! I'm going up. What, what were you guys? Maybe 23, 24? I mean, yeah, yeah. This is like when I was doing bands and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so it's when you're trying to be. He like, was younger than me. He might have been 18. He might have been like he was a new friend uh, of the group. Okay. So he might not even have been that. Old, yeah. As old as us. And definitely not valuable so to the friend group. But well, he like, only lasted a week before yeah. he fucked that all up. So, I mean, I mean, to me, that just screams of this is reoccurring. You know, this person does uh, this over and over and over. And, you know... Uh, Can't I mean, remember his name. Never saw a fucker exactly. again. Exactly. All I remember is, like, we went out one night and homie had a fur vest on. And then, like, he wore it. At that party, and then that next morning when he got his ass kicked in my living room. That's so funny. And then, yeah, Jerkoff says over 21 is a man. It's true. You are physiologically a man, but looking back at it from 37. Oh, if, I, if some fucking, if some kid said some shit to my wife like that, I would teach him a lesson. I mean, that's, yeah, right. How are you going to learn if you don't get taught a lesson? Right, right. And, and at that point, yeah, absolutely. Hands on. Like, you, and you fuck around, you're going to get your hands on. Dude, you know? no repercussions. This you guy know? got to beat the shit out of some fucking. 
Ah, they're, they're, they're still kids, but you got to learn. Is, oh, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like you can't, mentally, you can't let a kid get away with that. At, it's your at that wife. Point, at that point, 21 is when you start giving hard and, consequences. And, and I'm sorry, if uh, if my homie's dad didn't do it, my homie, I think, got maybe a couple licks in before. I think maybe he decked him in the apartment, and that's why he came over oh, maybe or something. And, yeah. Because I remember him telling me, like, all my stuff's there, man. All my He was so concerned because, like, all his CDs – Metalheads that have like rare CDs. rare CDs, that's like a thing. Yeah, that he was very concerned. Like they're gonna, they're not giving me my shit back or something like that. And I was like, still trying to process. Like, yo, what happened? And yeah, then the door just got kicked in. That's but so man, funny. I felt like such a dickhead because it's like, why, why did I let him in my house? Well, I mean, you're a nice guy and you didn't know he was a fucking piece of shit. The yeah, night yeah. What else are you gonna do? I found out. Yeah. And then I, and then I was like, can't help you, bud. Yeah, I mean, at that point, you made a pass at my friend's mom. I, I don't trust you. Get the fuck away from yeah, me. Yeah, it was wild. That you was know? a wild time, dude. Like, you got to read the writing on the wall there. Security this, hub. That, oh, this is on the That wall. is a very, hey, if you guys have ever wondered what a red flag looks like, if somebody's having problems that early on, don't be the guy try to save them. Yeah. Or don't be the person. Um, no, not yet. Yeah, evil dude says fur vest dudes are always trouble. They can be. They can be trouble. You can say that about battle jacket dudes, but I've met some cool battle jacket dudes too. Yeah, I mean, I I used to wear fur jackets. You I, know, wear, faux, I faux sometimes jackets. I throw the battle jacket on. Sometimes you know. Uh, um, you know, I I was gonna buy a leather jacket recently to do to start building one up, but man, you just unless you're committed to it. It's a yeah. It's it's we live in San Diego. It's hot. It's hot. It doesn't work. <laughs> I can't I can't get a leather jacket even if it's fake. It's it's just it's too warm. It's way too warm. But um you know, uh, we're talking about faux fur, of course. We're uh, talking about faux fur, of course. Or or buying resale. It's this only- dude actually had because that was a big talking point. I remember like we would go to this bar yeah. out in PB and people were like, "Yo, is that real?" No, fake fur. Yeah, no, because some people are fucking ridiculous. It's ethically sourced at Joanne's Fabric. I'm so fucking happy. I'm so fucking happy. Deck that fool, man. Holy shit. Deck the shit. fucking halls. Deck the halls. Hey, we got to take a real quick break. We haven't taken a break yet. I'm going to talk to my chopper pilot here. Mr. Adam Jensen's going to get his ass uh, somewhere to a new level where I can sneak up on fools. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We sure do love it. Hell yeah. And the city life. Oh, yeah. Rings true, baby.
Yes, is this the barbershop quartet place? Uh, well, there's a gentleman here that is, uh, that deals with the barbershop quartet. Yeah, may I speak with him? I'm sorry, he is, uh, in the meeting right now. Can I take your name and number? Okay, um, I have to get in touch with him because I want, I seen this advertisement about that barbershop quartet. And what I do, I don't sing with the group, but perhaps you heard of our group, the Gargling Boxers. And what I do, I'm the gargler. You're the gargler. Like this. Uh-huh. I was wondering if he needed a gargler in uh, his barbershop quartet. Well, uh, I can certainly ask him. Um... I'm going, I'll tell you what, because right now I'm out of friends, but I'm going to give him a call back to look into this. Because my last band, Louis, uh, hurt himself, so we're out of play right now. Uh-huh. You know, I don't want to get the vocal cords rusty for this, you know? Right. So I want to keep them flowing with the gargle. Uh-huh. That's lovely. Yes, well, that's what I hope he would think, too. So, when will he be free? Anytime in the near future? Um, well, I probably... I... <laughs> Between 4.30 and 5, he should be... That was uh, We Three Kings. He's a musical he? genius. That was We Three Kings. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful, right? Hey, uh, it's it originate in California. Uh -huh. Hi, my own ear. And then to Rehoboth, because we gargle very well. Yep. But he will be free soon? Uh, I yeah. expect sometime yep. between 4.30 and 5. Oh. Great, I'll tell you what. You see, what to gargle? Thanks. I'm not supposed to tell anyone, but we have this special blend of like this just cream. And we just gargle this, and it really, like, it's smooth, and that's how I perfect the sounds. They jizz cream, okay. they gargle the jizz okay. cream. I'll call back around, what time? Well, why don't you try somewhere around, uh, Woo. quarter of five. Quarter till, quarter. what time is that? Quarter. Quarter of five, four. That's 15 minutes before five o'clock. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I talked to him then. Wait, lip. And... Thanks. He's whistling Dixie. There you go. It sounds good. I'll send him your regards. Send him everything and tell him I gargle for him. Right? Okay. And make Great. sure you tell him it's from Rehoboth. Because that, <laughs> this is where the uh, gargling suction uh, professionals uh, we go. We start in California okay. and okay, go all the way the to Rehoboth. California Rehobit. style with California a hit of Rehoboth jizz gargle, right? <laughs> okay. Great. Okay, who is this? Um, my name is... I'll, I'll call back, okay? Uh-huh. Oh, great. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, great. Goodbye. Girl, bye. Okay, we've landed in the chopper. We've told a story. We've talked about Ava. We hit up the new pizza video. It's time for the plugs, though, Brian. Our favorite part of the show. Gotta talk about what's on Mega64's Twitter, baby. Yeah. There is a lot <coughs> to cover. I hit the I hit the new sitar beat. Feels like I'm in an opium den. Yeah, buddy. Smoke them if you got them. Hitting the opium on the Chinese Year of the Dragon. Rawr! You ever done opium, Brian? Uh, no. Don't answer that. Okay, sorry. Uh, real quick, we're going to the full screen here. Mega64's no. got a lot of great things on sale. I'm looking at... Oh, the boys. Not only having great things on sale at our booth at PAX East, March 21st through the 24th. Baby, it starts tomorrow. If you're hey. in the Boston area, come by the Bobcat Theater hey. Friday for a panel at 8 p.m. We're selling stuff all weekend long. Sean's going out to Boston for the first time in five years, Brian. Five years, wow. If you haven't seen Sean out on the East Coast since 
2000, what's the math on that? Carry the one for 2007, 19, uh, 18. Oh my God. Ooh, yeah. That's how long it's been. Join the boys out at PAX. See a successful end of Evangelion. Uh, we've got some homies out with the beautiful merchandise. Speaking of beautiful merchandise, this was just announced. Another physical release from your boys at Mega64. That's right, the farewell tour. So what? It's what, Johnny has cooked up a brand new mind-bending physical piece of media. This new Blu-ray comes out April 5th. You're going to want to get this. Jay is in it. Brian, everyone loves Jay. They can't nice. get enough. I saw people in the chat when Gerard the Completionist was shown on screen say jump scare. Now, I don't know what that means, but I certainly would be scared if I didn't pick up a copy <laughs> on April 5th. That's true. Also, oh, the fuck shirts are sold out, Brian. What? Sean and I have been drafted to make a new product. I don't know if you can tell what that says, but this is the new 6X fuck shirt in XL only. I'm sorry, in long sleeve only. I love it. Uh, we have sold out already, so there's no need to even plug it. But the BG Piz Masters aprons, I believe, still on sale over at shopmega 64 Dot com. Hey now. Uh, we have uh, here's a, our yeah our lovely podcast guest Sarah's not famous joining us to talk end of Ava. I believe the chroma has been extended. Hey. We're gonna have them out of packs, and we're also gonna have them extended for a little bit longer. The kind of treatment they gave the PPS shirt, which. Guys, thank you for making the poorly played shirt a success. Oh, yeah. I have heard from management it went well. Everything yeah. is now on track Good. to be printed and sent out as soon as we can get them. The balls are rolling, and it was because of your lovely willingness to head on over to shop.mega64.com. Thank you, my Mega64 audience. Hell yeah, I'm everyone. Happy. I am so fucking happy, too, Sean. We did it. We really brought it home this time. What else? Oh my God, look what's gonna be at PAX. I mean, so much across the board, the digital, digital forever. Switch case, I forgot what they call those things for about a half a second there. Rare copies of the unboxing ring. Oh. Could there be any left, even if it were? Wow. Even if it were? Well, I can't click on that. I'm trying to click on the wrong thing. All gods die in my hand. Okay, that's enough. That's enough social media. Enough. Come see us. I'm pack. getting. I've had enough. St shut up. Make sure you see us at PAX. Yeah, you got to come out. Um. Oh shit. Adam Jensen is here. Is the game audio also a little low? I don't know. That's okay. I'm. A, I'm not about to take I'm not any about chances. To take any chances. Sounds nah, good. Nah, sounds me. good. Lethal it is. But remember. Still Who's this guy with the fucking uh, the the Eric Badur haircut here? Ha. What's uh what's what this dude's like name? I don't know. This guy's like my benefactor. What the fuck? Dipshit. He's got a cool cyber arm. I'm saying I don't know. I don't know. So you want this guy's fucking leader of the Rat Pack distance? here. No smoking. <clears throat> I want a distance weapon. I want a short range weapon. Fucking give me the combat rifle, give me dog. Something with distance. If I get too close, I'll take them out personally. Yeah, personally. Try not to if I get close, I'll get him with the swords, and then from a distance, Typhoon boom, I'll hit him the with the scope. The you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tell you more as you go in. Stream audio is good. Comps. Thank you. Terrific. Anything else? The Razor Gem. So what? Um, I want to shout out. Let's check the IRL chat for a sec. Uh, Bung Allens. Would you guys get a Cyber Hog? You talking about like a pleasure kind of uh there's a name for it in Cyberpunk. You can get that mod. Oh. Pleasure Daddy, Pleasure Doctor or some shit. I don't know. Would mm. you do a Cyber Dong? Cyber Dong? Take, like, take get a like Viagra. A, get like a replace my dick with a better dick or something? Well what if you had like an injury and they had to put like tubes with saline along the sides of your urethra? Like two tubes and then 
those little tubes, they're like an inflatable bladder, more or less. Uh. And then those tubes go into one of your testicles, and there's a, a like a, a pump where you pump the saline solution into those bladders, and then it... That's how they do, like, a... Uh, 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 you know, penis surgery now, or at least a oh. couple of years ago. I don't know. Oh, I don't... The implants don't get much better than that. It's still, if you have erectile dysfunction, they they would put the pump in. You never heard about guys pumping it up? No. I think like, uh, who was it had that? Fucking oh. uh, Godfather of Soul? So what? Who had that? John Wayne Bobbitt might have had that? I don't know. I would... Maybe. Is he the Godfather of Soul? They've really done that surgery where there's, yeah. there's like inflatable bladders that hold saline along the penis. That makes sense. And then the tube goes into your ball. But where they have to take one of your balls away. Maybe. you got to make room for this pump. And then you pump the saline in, and then you pinch in another area, and then you that would let it out. And you, I think you have to, like, push it back out. I've never Can heard of that. you imagine? I, I just, hope I never have I hope that. nothing ever happens I thought you were just cock. talking about getting an ionic dick. Oh, I, but that's, like, the 90s version. That's, like, the best they could do. Yeah. This is fucking, I don't know, 2077. When does Deus Ex take place? Uh, save the life of a deadly attack, Adam Jensen. It doesn't say when it, what the timeline is. But, you know, I, don't, I, I bet they got, like, metal. But we can't fuse metal nowadays. It would still have to be some kind of, like, organic thing. Yeah. With latex and tubes. So what? And medical grade uh, plastics. Uh, yeah, who knows, man? I just hope. I, I'm with you. I hope I never have to. Oh my God! Can you imagine something happens to your dick? That's the worst. I know, poor Johnny Knoxville. That's the oh, he had to have a stint. Yeah, he almost had it for like completely torn off. Two years, he had to stint himself with a catheter or something like for two years. Poor guy. Oh. Oh, because he was on fucking some motocross bike. Fucking. And it just landed on him. Tore off his. Fucking Let me dick. move this. Let me move this. The worst thing ever. Excuse me, guys. I gotta move some boxes here. Shoot him. Without the weapon, sir. Without the weapon, sir. Without the weapon, Shoot sir. him. What does that mean? Without Put the weapon. Put, Put it. Gun away. I don't. No, I keep my weapon out. I don't listen to the cops. There you Rule go. number one. <laughs> don't listen to the fucking police, sir. Put the boxes on the floor, sir. SI security. This guy yeah. looks trustworthy. He's got no. some digital camo. He used to be on team <clears throat> that Mexican town thing what else did I say I want to talk about? I talk about like Resident and Evil 2 modding. Mm -hmm. How was the chat on that? Did anyone have any tips? Meaning corpses seem to fall. I hope uh, I hope it's just so new like that like good tutorials will come in the coming weeks when everyone's like using this mod. Adjusting. Yeah. Maybe it's I don't know. <clears throat> Because you're doing it on the Steam Deck, so. I don't know either. But it's very similar to how, like, Steam. Yeah. It's almost the same. Because I've watched some Steam tutorials, too. Okay. Uh, to compare, like, what's going on. like, And it's almost the same. What do you want to know? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I never fucked around with it's it. It's just, I can't. Like, I can launch the game, and the mod manager that I launched the game from says that the mods are on. But then when the game starts. And I go into the RE framework like menu. It's mm. like there's nothing for those mods. I don't see them showing up there. And I tried extracting those mods files into different folders, and I thought like maybe that was going on, but mm. it's fucking comp. It is fucking super complicated. That's why I've dumped so many hours into it. Yeah. Uh, what's the fucking plan here? Realistically. How much time do I have before So now I've got, like, reach. full cyber arms and eyes and everything. According to your boss, so I should be able to do stealth kills. He's got so dope-ass, like, mantis blades in his murder, arms. He can kind of fucking come in <laughs> like a ninja. Then if I advance the story enough. Let's just go back. I think I've heard enough. You sure? Yeah. I got, I got it. it. Here. But we got a choice. <laughs> You gonna let me take over? It's like a hostage situation or what? Jensen, it's me, hmm. Where are you? On the roof. On top of the roof. Good. Your point of entry should be through shipping and receiving. Should be, Francis. Shipping and receiving, eh? We have an employee entrance there. 
heavily guarded by purists. Yeah. Ooh, fall damage. Yikes. So if you're not a fan of the oh, do you assault, pick up healing items in this game, or do you just auto? It looks like I just... Yeah, you're Yeah, it's going up. It's, it's... I can really see, like, the footprint of Cyberpunk 2077 in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, even from, like, certain parts are third person, <clears throat> and certain parts are forced first person. Yeah. Um... That's something I would love a mod for, to give a fucking third-person, like, over-the-shoulder view of that game. I'm sure there is on Oh, PC. shit. Oh, shit. I thought, I, I thought you were a cop. I thought you were my friend. Take that. Ooh, let's duck. Let's cover, please. He's going on this side. Come on, show yourself, buddy. Brian, were there other Discord callers we should... Yeah, pick up on. we do have one in there waiting. Maybe they're human revolution heads. They're fan of they might be. fans of Mr. Jensen here. Hi there. Hey. How you doing, Zill? I'm doing pretty good. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Yes, welcome, welcome. Oh, fuck. Are you a human uh, revolution uh, fan? Or are you... So, Are I you mean, I've cleared the game a long time ago, Yeah, but, like, one, right? it's, it's, I fell off on Human Mankind, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. Is, the, was the there next, one after the next this? Game. After yes. this on PS3? Mankind, Mankind Divided. Ah, and it was a direct and sequel to this. Yes. Okay. It's very, it's a, it's a lot more like Cyberpunk than this one. This one's a lot on rails. You get to explore a lot more in the city. In, in the next one. Oh yeah. Do they know I'm out of ammo? <laughs> it came out on PS. So like, this uh, this one's very like linear apparently. Okay. I wanna. It's it, it's it is and it isn't. They they separate it in acts, right? Okay. Like the cities are kind of open, but it, not really. I'm very curious. Uh, that other one's a PS4 game, you say, Brian? Yeah. Interesting. Was that the last one released? How do I switch yeah, it's been things? a long time. Huh. It didn't sell all that well, I think, and then it kind of just didn't receive the support that they wanted it to. Yeah. I wasted so much ammo uh, that I would honestly like to like redo this section, but also, I know I have another fucking gun. I just can't fucking seem to get it out. Huh. <laughs> No. Yeah, this game so is a sim with with how little ammunition they give you. Dude, like, really? You really gotta count your bullets. Oh, is this how I have to go into the? Nah, it's got. I mean, there's got to be a button like triangle or I don't know. It's normally triangle. Yeah, it's not. That ain't it. I think I've hit every button here. <laughs> this dude's like just, running in at me. You can just sneak up on him and punch him, or you know, do a little execute. Yeah, it hasn't. This is like before the tutorial. It hasn't like taught me. Oh wait, press. Oh, shit. Oh there my go. goodness gracious. Don't fuck. Don't walk away from me when I'm talking to you. That was fucking dope. Okay, I like what you're. Yeah, I like this, what you're saying. This, uh, this game. Can, there's a full 100% pacifist mode in this, in this I, game. That's yeah. Like, hard to do, but. It, it cuts to black for a second there. It's so crazy, like, how this game has to load, probably. Yeah. Um, okay, now that I'm in stealth, let me see the tutorial on stealth. Being stealthy. Uh, did you happen to see End of Ava in theaters, or were you... Uh... I have not, but I have recently watched... Um... The th oh, was it try uh, try or uh, the mo the movie previous? You know, the last of the remakes. Oh yeah, thrice upon a time. Yeah. Yeah, thrice upon a time. Very cool. existential near the end, you know. Yeah, that <laughs> ending is very much like a different version of End of Ava to me. It's weird. It's oh like, yeah. 100%. It's very much like, even has the same kind of weird cg stuff in it like the cg also brian looked like terrible in end of Ava on the big screen right uh, like when you would see like the wavy like walking armies of like souls but they were just like a red shape <laughs> uh, and all the ships all the ships look very heavy cg that they used <laughs> yeah you're talking uh thrice they they definitely do yeah uh but even in end of Ava, it was just funny seeing on the screen like 
during the end, there's yeah. some stuff that is like weird CG, like wavy people like walking, but they're like marching yeah. and. Uh, there's that type of shit oh, yeah. in, in Thrice yeah. Upon a Time too, and it's just like it stands out as like why is everything else is hand drawn? Why is this CG? It's so weird. Oh, ammo. Probably another form of like you know digital storytelling. You know, yeah, or, just or, you know visual storytelling. Or just it like it's so surreal. Long. Look at this other surreal shit. movies too. Say what? It also took a long time for each of those like resets for between thrice and the third oh, one. God, and, yeah. and they took like many, many years and <laughs> I don't know what the production's like, but I couldn't imagine working yeah. with like uh one of these Artur like filmmaker or game makers like a Hideo Kojima or a uh Hideaki Anno. Because it's like their word is law, right? And like any little weird minute thing that might seem superficial to you is like the biggest deal to them it seems like working with these guys it seems like that's how i feel like that would be very yeah you'd have to have extreme patience you know brian yeah i do feel like the first two films on that remake series though hold are gonna hold up a lot better than the lat the thin three and four yeah three isn't the most loved but it's this nice calm before what we get as a oh, climax and four yeah i do too i yeah. do too I think they I, get better as they go along. I think also, good. I think two might be my favorite of rebuilds of all four. That's I think, the one where they find Shinji in space, or is that three? That's the that's beginning. Three, I think. And then that's the one where like Shinji like actually like pulls Ray at the consequence yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. ending the world again. Yeah, creating with the second cataclysm or the third one the near the third impact one. He yeah, he, he, yeah he actually shinji has his his first like growing a pair arc where he like mans up and does what he wants for himself and yep. i want to save ray and he pulls her out of zarul's core but it's basically initiating the the end of the world right but he doesn't give a fuck because he just is being selfish for the first time in his fucking whole character arc mm -hmm. uh that I love. That's why I have that whole scene tattooed on this yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah. I love 2.0 so much. Uh, and then I think it's just it's so good and so action packed that some people who aren't real Ava heads they think 3.0 is like dull and slow and boring. Huh. But it does have so much character development it's that's great. really really expounding yeah. on what you thought you know about these people from the series. But no, these people are different, and it might. It might drag, but yeah, it's... Uh, I think there's different drag. genres between 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. They're completely different types of films. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. Very different films and, and really, again, like bringing together a... Uh, bringing together a very nice way of ending the whole story and the arc of the of the Evangelion curse. What a way. Or curse of Evangelion, whatever they call it. Oh, fuck! <sighs> That wasn't well, no, I, supposed to happen. I, I gotta say that this movie, I've never not liked Asuka. Um, you know, I always thought Asuka was really cool. And, but she's the best in, in Rebuild. It, well, it, watching End of Evangelion made me like her even more. Oh, you're talking I, just the the what we just watched in, yeah, yeah. in theaters? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. In the series, originally, I, I, I liked her character. I saw what, what they were there for, um, but I didn't really realize like how much how much more she was meant to push shinji to do to do anything until i kind of put her into context with the new movies too and like you know i love i love how i love how like they use her character to be this sort of uh yeah this opposite of shinji this 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 character that wants to do something with their life that, that has been driven with purpose and maybe has had that purpose uh bastardized over time but at least has a purpose and is willing to put themselves out there you know again in the end of evangelion when when they realize like oh i've been here to do this the whole time with my and my mother has been with me this whole time and they they find yeah. that strength again it, it's meant to counter shinji like shinji is still even at the end of it he does what's right and you know separates people by a t field but then regresses back to his scared yeah primal instinct so yeah like i mean it's kind of funny it's like so what you would have respected shinji if he crushed your throat and killed you 
like pathetic you know like that that's why or that's why i like it so much because the the answer the just, answer at the end is like is she calling the effort of him giving up trying to crush her throat pathetic yeah. or the fact that he wished everybody back pathetic you know like uh, or that he even put people in this place to begin with and and, and that whole God like damn it. again like that's kind of why i still like the end it's it's more of it's it's less about the end and more about what the characters are struggling through as they go through the film. And uh, and it was really fun to watch with, like, full clarity of the entire, you know, visual series of, of Evangelion from the series to the rebuilds to now and of Evangelion again. It was really cool to compare that with uh, against everything. Yeah. yeah. It really did make me want to rewatch the series again. But yep. I'm... I'm in, right in the middle of Attack on Titan for the third time, but I'm getting farther than I ever have. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still think, again, Evangelion is one of the uh, kind of front to back, one of the very few series or very few pieces of, of work where I don't think it, it ever really degrades in quality. It's not about it's like... It's only gotten more poignant to me yeah. as I've gotten older... As I've grown older as a man, yes. I feel like the themes and everything in Ava have only gotten more poignant. Because yes. I can look back on my life and relate like, oh, this is what Anno was saying at this point of, you know, yeah. Shinji. Like, if, 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 and like, then it's different. Like, he needed to f tell a different side of Shinji the older he got and the more he had to relate to the character yeah because i mean if that's you, what you get in rebuild if yeah, you look sorry. at no no you're good you're good because i'm more piggybacking off of what i'm you're fucking saying. up here but if you look at what shinji does in rebuild compared to what he does in uh end it's it's very interesting to to see like there's a line i think i didn't even pay too Sato tells him something like, you don't understand, you can't understand this now because you're a child. You don't see how stupid your sulking is right now. But you need to continue so you can see why it was that you were stupid when you were young. There's something along those lines um, that didn't really stick out to me before when, I, when I'd watched it. But then again, in the whole of the Evangelion series... You see that 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 is what the whole point of doing the rebuilds were was oh, they that fucking saw me was that Shinji had to Shinji was forever uh, stuck as a child. That's the curse of Evangelion. So is every Evangelion and the attachment to the mother that you have, right? Like the Evangelion gives you power. You're surrounded by your mother, and it's the sacrifice that 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 you have or that they have to give you that power your parents die so that you can continue on from the from the foundation of uh that they that they gave you and uh and shinji realizes that that's the point and they even said it in evangelion end of evangelion that i didn't even hear it it was like yeah it's going through these trials shinji that you'll be able to like be become a, better a person. man <laughs> yeah and be become a man and and being a man isn't this like macho thing it's more Stu like, like you see it a lot more. Like they have the they have the conversation in in um in four point or whatever you want to call it, um, with Gendo and Shinji where they talk it out about why why it felt like the right choice was to not do anything. Well, yeah, Gendo's like all I can do is cause pain to Shinji, so the best thing I could do is be away from him. Yeah, which we is like such a selfish stupid thing that everyone tells Gendo like you're a fucking idiot for thinking right and, and it's the same thing that Shinji did was well I which I man how much of that is Hideaki Yano's like real personality right I mean it's all of our personalities it's the True. reason why we are averse to doing certain uh, uncomfortable things let's say you know we, we don't want to be implicated so we're just kind of like oh but doing nothing is also a choice and in do and that's kind of what end of Evangelion talks about is that in doing nothing Sometimes that's worse than than making a decision and having it be thought out, because that's what Shinji does. It's a childlike mentality. He like 
I, I can run away from it. I can avoid this problem. And then in, again, you compare that, mirror that to 4.0. Yeah. And you see Shinji coming to grips of like, oh, I thought running away made it easy, made me not complicit, made me no longer, because the biggest thing that Shinji had, it's the biggest thing that we all have. You're right about it being Ano. It's this, At that I don't want to make the wrong life. choice. Yeah. Every, every day that's our problem is we don't want to make that choice that ends up making something wrong for somebody else, for fucking up other things, and then we beat ourselves up when sometimes that choice that we couldn't have even accounted Hedgehog's for. Hedgehog's dilemma, bro. Yeah. The, 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 Can't let someone get close to you without accidentally maybe hurting them. Well, I mean, it's it, it's it's almost like as you get older, you recognize that letting people in, opening yeah. your AT field, that's yeah. what they talk about. Again, in End of Evangelion, it went over my head. But now as an adult, I'm like, oh, like, again, they couldn't have been more blatant. But it's like you drop your AT field and you let people in. And that's when we become more – we're still ourselves, but we're not separated by this uh, barrier anymore. And the barrier is only to protect us from – from true harm and that's part of relationships that's part of living life that's part of everything is that when you make a decision when you take an action or don't take an action there is something there's a byproduct there's there's something that happens what as a result <laughs> he spun his fucking neck around dog. As, a, as a result of it and like what end of evangelion talks about is why it's important to still do something because by by shinji not doing anything he he oh he caused the end of the world yeah but by his inability to make a fucking choice thankfully because of his heart and his ability to connect with with, with ray throughout the show she gave him the opportunity give him another chance to make that to to, to do it right uh, or to, to to let it to to go back on it if, if he wanted to and he realized that he should now whether or not it was because he understood that you know that reason or because he felt guilty about causing all this problem and this was like what he thought he had to do that could be debated endlessly yeah but then again in the end of the series with 4.0 when you mirror that ending it's so much more definitive shinji real like they explain it in the train scene like we need to be able to live our lives and we need to have, we need to accept our decisions he says i i thought running away would make me not responsible for things but in actuality i ended up pushing people away who cared about me and those are yeah. the things that really matter and it's and and so then they get to they've they they no longer have the curse of evangelion no oscar's like shown aged appropriately up at the end on her beach yeah and uh it's just so interesting too because like shinji ends up with neither of the choices he had in the original show. Right. He was the boy having a fantasy of the older woman or the mousy girl or the brat. Mm -hmm. And he ends up with Mari at the end of Rebuild. And I know that pissed some Ava fans off. And they're like, he should have been with Asuka. And it's like, he fucking, watch End of Ava. He hated Asuka. Yeah, Oscar was fucking mean. They were not good for each other. Like yeah. it, they should not have ended. Mari was in love with Yui, just what like Gendo was. Yeah, but not to insanity ends. It, it, Mari also had the curse of Ava, so she gets to like meet Yui's son Shinji, mm -hmm. and only through falling in love with him, it's the same mission sh that Gendo has for Mari. She can only be with Yui by being with Shinji. Yeah. Through, through through her son, that's the only Yui that's living on. And Gendo fucked that up because he could have had a whole life with Yui still through his son. Through his son, exactly. But he didn't make that choice because he was too afraid to, to hurt someone. Go. And and that I love that symbology of like if you read the manga and you're familiar with the real backstory that Mari had. There's just a sliver in there yeah. that ties to um, the last chapter of Sadamoto's manga. Man, it's so fucking interesting that, yeah, Shinji and Mari are together. And that is, Shinji got to be with someone who is just like his mother. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it's like a college Almost student a, yeah. that went to school with his mother. And Mari gets to be with the closest thing to Yui that is available, which yeah. is, is Shinji, in that world, in that outcome. I just, I just kind of like love that, that ending as well. I, I, I and too. I love that this is like re-released in theaters, and 
Everyone's going to fucking see it. It seems like a lot of people a are going. A lot of people. It's, a lot of people in the chat went. It's got so much discourse about Ava going again. Like just like when the Netflix show got you know announced or you know Netflix getting the rights. I should yeah. say got announced. I still have the Blu-ray. I want to watch. Like now again, like you. It's oh the G Kids one. To me again, Evangelion and Lost. They're 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 always going to kind of be hand in hand in the same way that I watch them. Yeah. It, it, it not a day goes by where I don't think about a life lesson that could have been applied to it, even though the shows may not have originally meant to be some sort of like prolific um, Bible esque guide to life or whatever. No. It's just I art just reflects life, life and left in left life through these mo- like um, motifs the and these fucking um, what? these symbols that we that we all I recognize. I mean, that's kind of why he uses the structure of Catholicism. Ano in his in his uh, building of Evangelion because we recognize whether or not you understand theology you recognize it's a theolo- theology the based image there's some sort of otherworldly ethereal thing so it uses that symbolism to, to, to convey to you its importance it doesn't need to be one to one but it does that lost at the exact same thing by having many characters named after religious and uh, philosophical um, you know, people in in the world, like, you know, Rousseau, John Locke, um, Desmond David Hume. There's, it's, the show is rife with characters that are either theologically based or philosophically based. And the reason for that, again, is all of these shows, just like any piece of media, it's a reflection of us. It's, it's, oh, it always is. And yeah, it's written trying... by someone experiencing humanity very right? similar to most of us, I assume. And, right, like, I can tell you from personal experience what was i I, when i wanted to write the hardcore song uh for satire (laughs) for fucking sean oh sean's song yeah sean's song the reason why i wrote it was i wanted to embody rage and i used the vessel you don't give a fuck about this dance bro of this rage to to fuel my what i wrote for the song so even though the subject matter and and it's my favorite thing about the song even though the subject matter is silly it's about not seeing your your daughter in her dance recital. The song is still cool, and the rage I feel like is captured because I. That's what you get, that's what you do. You put those images into into your pieces of art, and the ones that do it the best are the ones that, when we even watch or talk about one morsel of it, we want to re- reflect what thoughts we're having now against the rest of the piece of work, and that's why. Yeah, just like you, I'm sitting there going. Man, I got that DVD, or I got that Blu-ray. Yeah, it's, I haven't even popped it, it in yet. It's been years. Is it time? I think it's the last time. time I watched Evangelion, my cat died, so it was, uh, you know, it was kind Damn, of very smoke monster. Yeah, so it was like twelve. What year is it? No. Whenever we talk about Ava, we always it was bring like up 10 Lost. Years ago. Zill. You can't talk oh, about yeah. Ava with me and Brian and Lost doesn't come up. Because to me, they're the, they're the same type of show. Well, the motif of the show is about Lost. Yeah, for <laughs> you sure. At the very, very yeah, end, yeah, yeah. the dead reveal of the whole thing. And it's like, Which oh, man? I guess I never really looked at that way. What a universal human emotion because we all have family and we all, because of that, will experience loss. Yeah. Because and- those family members die and we all go through it. And yeah, that's... Uh, such a human condition, yeah. Like the title of that episode, a human condition. You there sit you go. down. <laughs> and I, I mean, again, like, um, like that is what I like in media. I love that when I'm watching something, if it can surprise me with that, where it's making an interesting commentary without it beating me over the head about it. Like, you know, I was, last week when we were talking about Tenant, that's one of my favorite things about that movie is that even though it kind of is beating you over the head with character names and, and certain things it's like a self-sustained system of of what's going on in in like this story it exists because it has to because we're writing a story and if it doesn't substantiate itself then it doesn't make any sense yeah and like you can see that in other shows compared to or other pieces of media it doesn't have to just be shows I'm even seeing that now that I'm looking past the boring paint job of Attack on Titan. Uh, I'm seeing because I'm getting into the lore and the characters. The characters now are like revealing deep, revealing mysteries and their their motives are being revealed uh, for the first time. That just took fucking 
30 episodes to happen, so yeah. Jesus Christ, guys. That's why I never got into that show. It just Me took too. so long to get to this interesting point. But it is all about these human uh, 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 um, pursuits to to kind of avenge a loss. Yeah, I mean that's part Such of it. Such right? a driving or to, force, or to mitigate it, or mitigate to it, or to just get avoid it, avoid altogether. it altogether. And, yeah, and, yeah. and that's and that's the thing that I feel right like, that wrong. I feel even. like that's the thing that people don't get. And and this is this um, this is the this is the part where it's like, well, here's the sobering conversation, everyone. Everyone around you has a day where they're no longer going to be around you. Oh, don't say it. Whether that means they don't live anymore. Or they're, they've effectively died from your life. Like, hey, fur... Breakups. Fur, fur dude. vest dude. Fur yeah. vest dude is might gone. As well, might as well be dead, right? He's if gone, you, though. That's why when you see them years later, it's like seeing somebody come back from the dead. Yeah. You know, like, you're like, I never thought I'd see, you know, whoever that is. I, hey. Right? I never thought I'd be watching a fucking Walking Dead show in 2024, but... Bro! Rick is back, baby. I right? just, uh, you what know, do you mean Rick is back. The How is that possible? The ones who lived, it's like seeing it's a outrageous. yeah, ghost. Rick's back. Bro. Oh, isn't oh, it like a weird prequel God. thing? No, it's like way. It's like the furthest after all those. I was done with the show like 2012. But like, I cannot like, believe that's still going. It's it when I just started this. Uh, this the ones who lived, and it's a Rick and Michonne spinoff. But hey, man. I'm fucking watching it with Trish, and I'm like, this is giving me how good, like, the first two seasons of The Walking Dead were. Because Andrew Lincoln is who I care about. I yeah. care about Rick. I don't oh, care yeah. about the spinoff Andrew and these kids and the fucking whatever. Yeah, whatever. Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah, all of these, like, you know, there was a Fear Maggie. the Walking Dead was okay for one season, I think. I, I just, think he had a good premise, but I, I think it fell off I, like everything else. It just got away from Andrew Lincoln, who's such a good actor, and the Rick yeah. character, who's, like, the main character. It got away from that, and now having, like, it's just Rick and Michonne on an adventure. It's like, oh, this is pretty fucking cool. I, I think that's kind of cool, right? Like, I like this new show. It, it's it, it's sort of what happens when a show needs to continue, where it no longer is Ooh. about... I mean, look at The Simpsons, right? I'm not saying that, they're, that, like, all of their seasons sucked after season 12, but... But... What, what they did that made me interested in those first 12 seasons is that they made them about the characters. And there was something redeemable and relatable about Homer. Even if he was doing something absurd, like getting too fat so that he could work from home. <laughs> like, it was, it was he like... He purposefully got so fat that they, he couldn't go into the nuclear power plant? Yeah, there was a whole episode about him with the Moo Moo. And that's the Moo Moo? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Moo Moo. Yeah. And, and it's also he could work from home because he's a lazy ass. And we could we would all, at the time, were like, oh, wouldn't we all love to work from home and, and not have to go into work? And, and also the are. reality of working from home and seeing how, like dumb it is to actually work in an office because all he had to do was sit there and press one key all day like <laughs> yeah. that's a metaphor that's not it's funny but it's also reductionist of what it is to work at a job and that's what comedy is again we're using symbols to convey an emotion and that's what media does we can either show it to you and you can understand the symbol which is hard you know but that's what makes things connect to other people is whether or not you understand that method of communication it really is another language that's all language is it's all what comms are it's dude I, I was having a conversation with somebody about if i had to explain to you how to do a king of fighters combo the best way for me to show you but the best way for me to do it is to show you the combo is to do it yeah because it would take far more time to tell you to do a short hop neutral a to a down what? b forward c quarter circle forward uh a to fucking half circle back be like that you'll be like i you lost me at jump in neutral a you know what i mean like <laughs> it's so much harder lost to me at king of fighters i'm it, a mortal combatter <laughs> yeah or or that you know but but like that's that's kind of what i feel like people forget media ultimately does oh my knee and uh and yeah that's why shows will echo like that we talk a lot about loss we talk a lot about yeah, avo we talk a lot about sopranos because 
They're talking oh, more of, about like a, like a deeper human emotion, like the the feeling. What? Not of... enough energy? Oh, you use energy yeah. batteries. Yeah. So yeah, it's on the, the those two Stand notifications. Class. Yeah, it oh. auto regens on the first battery, but the second one you can use your inventory to refill. Oh. Okay, that's little, why like, I, was, and stuff. I was like, he's not doing the the stealth kill I, anymore. You yeah, you can spam it later, but since you're on mission uh. one, it's like very limited that's what i remember about this game now it's like dude they just do not give you a lot of ammo you, i think you you picked up i think uh your rifle ammo in the previous like level right you should have like 10 bullets maybe yeah, yeah. let me check let me check it's so, 10 i think there's a couple vents it's that really you can sneak around as well i kind of remember this mission oh, yeah, a bit look. and you can like throw trash cans and <laughs> you can throw like boxes at people and shit <laughs> you can do all kinds of crazy stuff to like avoid combat until beer. you like get enough ammo let's uh examine some beer gain additional like five health all right like this game is very metal gear solid like it in the is. first half of the game and where you're like yeah, sleep starting people and trying to not get in firefights right there's so much stealth uh but it's also it's like this cool cyberpunk versus like slash metal gear solid mm -hmm. and uh it's very there's a lot to it like you can do so much and it's a deep game. Um, one of these days, I'm gonna like actually sit down. Yeah, it's and an RPG. Through. There's a lot of lore. Yeah, look you at can all pick these. A, you can sit like wow. hours and just read documents. Like yeah. that's why I got lost in Mankind Divided is because I soft locked myself in a area in an area where oh, the I got stuck in. Now, that's the worst. It just cool. yeah, I was just it was like exploring. The game is so open with hacking. I went into an area I shouldn't have been, and then I got stuck in there. <laughs> <laughs> it can happen. That's Okay, yeah. so I'm going Especially back. Especially with older games, you could, you could soft lock yourself so oh, fuck frequently. Yeah. I was talking about that today on KLBR, playing um, Zelda Oracle of Ages. That's right. How is that? It, dude, I've never played that game. Again, just like a great piece of film or television media, great video games are still great. Still great. There, yeah. are, there are things, of course, you would wish changed. Like, after playing Link's Awakening, having more than two buttons is fucking so, like, so nice. Yeah. Going back to the Game Boy Color and you just have A and B, uh, man, it's super limiting. But it's beautiful. It's still fun. The music is great. And it's just – it's pure nostalgia, man. For me, I'm I'm just like delivered back to being in middle school, I would say, when the Game Boy Color came out. Um, late middle school. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, the Game Boy – for me, it was 2001 Game Boy Advance, right? Right, right, right. So, yeah, it must have been like – seventh grade and the game boy color was just one of the coolest things ever you know i i had a fat game boy before and then my brother got a game boy pocket and that oh screen yeah sucked. i never had the pocket yeah the pocket had it was a big screen i skipped the pocket i went from the fat boy to which with the dot matrix screen yeah to then the game boy color um and then the SP. The uh, the fucking um, the Game Boy Pocket longer. had a like calculator type screen. It was like a LCD, full LCD display. Ugh. But it was it was grayscale LCD. Ugh. So it would it had what is it trails? Is that what it's called? Trails up the motherfucker. Fuck, they saw me. But it was like a huge ass screen. I loved it, and it was small. Um, but man, the color was just to me. It was like crazy how cool that they were able to make uh you know colored games you know and, and back then it was it really felt new and so playing it on klbr has been really a blast because it's it's just oh, fun shit. and the, the games like that are just fun oh shit you're they're talking everywhere about, you're talking about resident evil 2 i play when i played resident evil 2 for febu scary I, I know i said it here but i want to reiterate that game is still perfect there is not a goddamn thing wrong with that game. Oh, remake? No. Oh, Resident the original. Evil 2, the original oh, yeah, PlayStation, dude, yeah. uh, like straight up tank controls. Leon A, Claire Leon B. Leon A, Claire B, do whatever it's one so you good. want. You do them all, baby. Do them all. You Resident do the separate Evil ways. 2, still fucking rules. It's still fucking rules. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get stuck. This is going to be tough. No, nah, man. It was like, it was really fun. Same thing with when I played Dino Crisis 2. I'm like, man, now Did I get. Did you get through that? Because Dino Crisis. Yeah. 
Damn, last time I tried to play that was on stream, and I remember having a hard time. No, you gotta, I mean... I wasn't paying you, attention. You gotta play it off stream. Yeah, because I have to know, like, where the thing they just told me to go get is. Well, and, and also, uh, the, the, the dinos keep coming fast. at you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not stop, right? Yeah. I remember that now. Because it's not about conserving ammo. You're supposed to move around and gun, and once I Suspicious. got, once that game, like, clicked... Yeah, the, the sentry right there looking at you. Uh, oh, <laughs> what do I do with it? Shill <laughs> it? Hack you it. can you can hack it later on, or you can blow it up with a gun. Like, there you go. Yeah. But man, it it was it was really cool. Like Loot Dino Crisis bodies. Two was was again a game that like yeah I'm playing it almost thirty years after its release, and um and it's still fun. You know if you go back and you play Mega Man, you go back and you play any game that really One still of, yeah good. those those really good core good. uh classic games just stay evergreen. I'm yeah. with you there. And I, I mean, again, like... And Resident Evil 2 is definitely one of those. That, that's why, for me, I'm like, I don't have to go back and play every game that I missed, but there are certain games, like, I went, I'm went. i glad I went back and played Alan Wake, because I missed that when it was on 360. Yeah, see, I never fucked with that, and you you played the new one, too. Uh, that's why, because that's that, that primed me after... Oh, Control shit. primed me for Alan Wake, because it had the DLC, and I'm like, well, I don't want to do the DLC if I haven't done the fucking game. So I went, played Alan Wake, and I'm like, oh, dude, I like Remedy's storytelling. This is really neat. Control was really awesome. That's all the influences and things that I like too. Sci-fi, X Files, Lost, yada yada. Um, Twin Peaks, even though I haven't watched it yet. That's that's one that I need to fucking actually. Oh yeah, bro. Watch. I've oh, never what's happening? watched the actual series. You just gotta race, race the red line. That's all you gotta do. Erase the red line. Oh man. Yeah, but you gotta capture all the stuff and oh, protect shit. your home base. It's happening faster than I. Oh, it's like a timer thing. Uh oh. Yeah, you gotta get to. You gotta get all the like computers and stuff. This is fucking crazy, dude. This hacking is no going nuts. Are you a hacker? Are you a hacker? Ah, uh, fuck. They they canceled. Do I get another shot? Uh, I think so, but it'll alarm. Oh, 23 seconds remaining until I can try again. Yeah. Well, and then you probably have to fight the waves of if there were enemies left coming at you. Yeah, something like that. Well, at least it'll trigger alarm, but you're. I think you already triggered everything anyway. Yeah, right. Like, I just in the, I ran room. in. Uh, yeah, we got it would have been an issue if you were sneaking and then you did that, but... Got ya. I'm gonna go back to the revolver for a sec. Or, I'm sorry, the pistol. 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 I'm glad you're familiar with the game. Yeah. <laughs> well, before we let you yeah. go, Zill, because we're kind of at the end of the show, too. I don't think... Oh, did, fuck. Do we have anything else to hit today, yes, Brian, or do we do it uh, all? Do we, we do talked, the damn thing? We talked about Ava. We talked about... I felt like Speaking was... of Resident Evil 2, like... I've been sure. really getting into my Resident Evil 2 board game from Steamforge. Oh, yeah. I forgot you had that. Man, I've been upgrading some parts for it, and I've been getting into painting the miniatures. Bro, it's going to be next board game Olympics. I'm telling you, I'm going to host a dope-ass playthrough uh, oh, yeah. if I can I'm... convince the homies. Hey, I'm down to play if it's two-player. Dude, it, it does not take a lot long. Like Campaigns are like 20 minutes. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, I, uh, I've been playing Thursday nights with Mace. I'm going to have Mason on the PPS soon, too, once That'd we get cool. back to Cyberpunk. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, man, that, that tabletop game is sick. I'll show you so I'll show you what I've been cooking up. I still like board games and tabletop games. So honestly. much, dude. It's just that the hardest thing is, oh, as always, getting people to commit to sitting down and playing. That's true. Time, time and rule sets, man. That's the issue always. for me. But if always you know someone who's familiar with the rule set, that's all you need is, like, at least someone true. to be familiar Look at how did I know yeah. the timer was gonna end right when I opened it up? Fucking. That's that's my huge hurdle for BattleTech. I bought all these boxes, oh. all the minis, and all that stuff, and then I, when I realized there's like seven modules, I'm like, there's eight different ways to play this game, and it's a one v one with insane rules, just like Warhammer. <laughs> Like, yeah. I don't know if, there, if I have time for this, but I love BattleTech, but boy, the tabletop is a hurdle. Yeah. To and I'm, I'm even out. more like, for me, I'm like, let's get some like simple board games where they're like more rudimentary rules as much as i enjoy um you know the tabletop and doing like uh role playing after doing that during uh during our big dogs foray into into D. oh yeah you played a lot of D. we did it for like almost two years man. yeah it, it, it's fun but it's like it i mean yeah it's a commitment it, it, the the campaign effectively Top never ends unless one. you decide it ends right yeah so so it's one of those things where i'm like oh okay i'm glad i did I this because it. it was fun and it'd be fun to pop in, but getting everything going too—that's the other yeah. thing. And we we had a really different experience of doing D and D. Our 
our dungeon master, our dungeon master was the fungeon master himself, Spencer Crinton. Crin oh man, if you have a good DM, dude, it no. makes it the whole another world. He was super flexible with us because we basically were building a custom game. Yeah, right, with all kinds of in jokes and shit. I mean, yeah, we were. Uh, I was like. I was like a gambit style character, and Frank was basically Wario mixed with Spawn. <laughs> Doctor Ryan was like uh, I don't know exactly what, but we we, we were we were trying to like franchise Taco Bell and like do all that. So, I mean, again, it was uh, Spencer knew what he was doing, but I didn't. But I still learned from playing. Yeah, that, and it, I learned it was really cool. I, I learned a lot from just playing. Yeah, like a fifth edition game mm -hmm. where where we did D and D here. Uh, you can find them all on the archives channel where we upload the PPS every oh, yeah. Friday. Um, but I, I learned a lot about just the game mechanics. And I think that yeah. made me, cause I really, you know, haven't played D and D in a long time, but I was playing cyberpunk tabletop. Like yeah. the role-playing game, cyberpunk red is it's what they're on now. I, think. <laughs> I was yep. playing that cool, for a good year and a half. It's kind of our, our, our group has fallen apart. Everyone yeah. kind of has new work schedules and everything. So now it's kind of switched to smaller tabletop games. That's why I got into the Resident Evil 2 board game. Yeah. And and we were playing Cyberpunk Miniatures as well. Okay. Um, that is uh, kind of like opened up in the last like two to three months. Not so much of the tabletop. Now I'm doing more board games. Tight. But it is just another aspect of gaming that, yeah, I kind of neglected until... We started doing it here for the Board Game Olympics. Yeah. And we've only started that show, I don't know, three, four years ago? During COVID, right? Yeah. yeah. Games yeah. that can last, like, 45 minutes to, like, two hours are, like, perfect. D&D oh, yeah. can be an all-day event, but, like, regular gaming is, like... Yeah, I don't... I, know, I don't I need, just, like... I just finished a five-year campaign, so, Woo! like, you know... <laughs> It, a lot of people. A, long time, so. a lot of people have these bad memories of, like, a Risk session that just went... For a whole fucking weekend, and like they couldn't get the goddamn mm -hmm. game to end, and like yeah, I know there's no, you these... gotta bend the rules at that point. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you just gotta start cheating, and get it over with. Ever actually played Monopoly? It fucking it drags, sucks. dude. It drags. I hate Monopoly. Every I game, game of horrible. Monopoly I've ever played was al was always the gimmick Monopoly, where it was just like oh, who whoever has the most money after whatever time. House know? rules, maybe. Yeah, house, house rules. Yeah, I, I don't even house rules can really improve a game. Also, like. Some of these modern board games, the developers include like, hey, here's a quick mode. Yeah. Popular, or here's single yeah, player. Here's the popular house, yeah, that people like to use. Yeah. Um, like and if you game. ever have a quick question, if it's a popular enough game, god damn, there's a YouTube oh, yeah. actual now. play or something that's like, oh, this answered every question I have. Yeah. Anytime I've actually in earnest started a game of Monopoly, we've always quit after the two hour mark because everybody's miserable yeah it's somebody not fun. i mean it, uh, the whole idea is you're supposed to own the whole board and then you have to pay taxes on everything you have to keep doing it's like what people do have to, yeah you gotta make people have to make bad deals to speed the, up the game or you stranglehold people on the first turnaround yeah. and be like i don't trade anything and <laughs> I, guess, I don't you know nobody I don't, gets monopolies i don't want to play a sim of boring ass suck ass real life you know? Yeah. <laughs> I want to play the cyberpunk tabletop where, like, we're having fucking combat with uh, blades and sniper rifles. And yep. I want to I want to experience the combat in tabletop and most board games. Because that's what It's rolling dice. Fun. People it's love the dice. roll dice. Yeah. I yep. think, that, yeah. We all, all want to roll dice. All, all fifth edition is, all D&D &D or, like, cyberpunk red is essentially, outside of your DM setting up your scenarios and storytelling, it's rolling dice. It's combat. It's yeah. all about the combat. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's and I, that's and why a I like creativity it. with it's, with your DM as yeah. well. I'm like, you can yeah. try to avoid rolling dice, but that's yes. also rolling dice. Yeah. Are you smarter than them? Well, Roll some dice. Yeah, yeah. That, that's really again. That's what it is. It's it, ultimately the what you gotta. I'm I'm reductionist. I, I I I'll go to what is the core of this game to try to understand how to tackle its object uh, objectives. Yeah, the core of every game is it's you versus the person who designed the puzzle. Yeah. And so the person doesn't want you to not solve the puzzle, but they don't want you to solve it fast. That's how that, that Steam Forge Resident Evil 2 game is built yeah. exactly like that, Th Brian. They want you to – this is how I've oh, come to understand them? game design and puzzles design and everything. Bad they girl. want arms you aren't to, strong enough. to listen to what they're telling you mm -hmm. and use those cues – 
to solve the puzzle. Right. Everybody gives you the answers in a game. They don't want you to... It, not solving the puzzle is the worst thing for a developer. But rather, how they get you to understand what the puzzles are is what the game developer is really trying to do. Whether it's a board game or a tabletop game or a fucking video game. The final idea is we're giving you all the cues. You just got to follow in it. Here. Yeah, I mean, there's right? Like, there's another way of doing this. So now next time, Could've if snuck you see in. some boxes, maybe mm-hmm. there's a grate behind it. And you should try to see if you can move yeah. them and sneak behind. Like, that's how game de- designs work. And so... Well, we got to put yellow paint on everything now. Yeah, that is like you a very, you know, about this dance, bro. now common <laughs> way of doing it. And I appreciate that. But, yeah, after playing, like, Metroid Dread and then going back to... Um, to Zelda and, and a lot of Nintendo games are so nonverbal with their game design. Yeah, yeah, that's a big Nintendo thing. Is like a lot of the characters just don't talk to you. Yeah, it, it, they're very clear about what you can and can't do, and it's my favorite thing to do while I'm commenting on a game. As I'm playing it, I'm like, okay, walk into this room, pitfall here. I can't jump over it. I'm not going to waste any more time here because clearly they're telling me this is a wall. Don't even come here. You don't have the thing that you Ooh. need. If when you have the item, remember that you can jump over this. And, that, and then you just go to the other area. Oh, can't pick up these rocks. So I can't go to the left. I must now go down. Oh, down, I can get further and further and further. And your reward is the, is the axis they allow you. And so, again, you start to learn when not to scratch at the paint and when to dig at the soft soil. Um, and that's what I love about any game or any puzzle or anything like that. Like Digging at that soft soil, Brian. It's the reward at for digging at it. It's like, hey, you heard what we said? Here's your treat. You know, like, hey, we told oh, you that if you, fuck? if you use that item, uh, you might get a power-up. Okay, what if I use that item here? Oh, here's your power-up. Oh, cool. Oh, there wasn't a power-up here, but it led you to another room. And now you have a new item that you wouldn't have even known or an expansion to your item. And those are, the, like, again, the, that's the gratification that I've always loved about video games. And I, very rarely does any other media engage me as as much as video games for that reason. Because that, yeah. that innate, what you're doing with your hands, even on the controller, like, that connection, that, that control over how the puzzle is solved, that is, that's what I like. And that's a, sort of what we were talking about last week with movies, too. Like, I like when a movie makes me think about the world that it's in because it's engaging me more than um, something that wouldn't. And that's what's cool. Damn it. Am I about to? Oh, fuck. No, you're good. Go on. Go on. Up, 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 up. Woof. <laughs> well, Zill, you, you got us on a nice uh, thought process just like Kristen did. Thanks, uh, Thanks again for, for calling yeah, no in, Yeah, no problem, man. man. Good talking to you. We sure do love you. We'll you see you, you next time. Yeah. Take care. Thanks for the help in the game. We're about to peace out. Okay. Yeah. I, I noticed it's like, fuck, man. We're, we're I can de- I can today. deactivate this turret or that camera. Boom. Uh, I can't see shit on these other ones. I can't investigate the turret yet. I need to shut the turret down. Damn it. All right. Well, hacking that really didn't help me out much. Fucking, I thought I was going to shut that turret down outside. Yeah. Maybe. What's this? Credit card? We'll take that. We'll take the credits. Let me see if I can just get past this fucking... Where was this guy? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's got to be... <laughs> I got to go down there, right? Probably. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, nice shooting, Tex. All right, let's see. Let's see. Bigger gun, first off. That's probably most important here. Let's equip that. Give her a nice reload. I'm going to go ahead and charge in gung-ho. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, he dropped a fucking... I can't see shit, dude. He dropped a fucking flash... How did the robot drop a flash grenade? Anyway. I don't know. Uh, that's further than I've ever been in this game, I gotta admit. Bro. And I, like, have a way more, uh, depth understanding of the controls and how complex it is. And they really, like, pepper in, like, here's the stealth kills, here's, here's this, here's hacking. Um, God, it is such a precursor to Cyberpunk. And hopefully we'll be playing some Cyberpunk yeah. in the future here. I want to have Mason on. 
uh, to talk about because I, I I know Cyberpunk got that new patch. Yeah. Uh, not new patch. It's the got the DLC, DLC, right? Phantom Liberty or whatever. Yeah, so I, I have to start that, and once I'm, like, a little bit in past the tutorial phase, I'd like to bring that in and play the side missions and just fuck around in Night City here. Fuck around. Have a guest on. Last week, uh, it was cool to have uh, Slime on as a guest. That he was. ended up leaving yeah, that red bean. Did you see that beanie? beanie? Over here. He left that beanie there. The beanie was there since last week. I don't know what it was. I should tell him uh, that we should get that back to him, but what is that? What does that McDonald's. mean? Wait, the fucking... What is it? Does that... What the fuck, Brian? Sit down. What is Jesus this? Christ. Is it Bro that? Is get that rid of that, that dude. Who... What the fuck? Pervert. Why did Slime have that? I know he was going up to LA to have some meetings, but... Jesus Christ. You know, no, don't wear that. It, Brian, it, don't have video of you gonna, on the internet We're going to wearing... do story time again. Uh, my story time is one time in a poli sci class. I said, oh, I thought Nam lament National Association of Men, Black, Latino, Asian. It's not what it means. <sighs> the class. People are going to clip class. this and call it the Horatio Alger <laughs> section of the poorly played stream. <gasps> the class said, no, I was joking. Why did he have, why did, why did Slime bring that into the studio? We're putting this... He the garbage. The what was? I don't know. What's? The, I don't know. I'm gonna ask him. He's. We're gonna get to the bottom of this it. This beanie brought to I, you by Nickelodeon. Oh, Jesus Christ! Nick, Brian, Nick, 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 Stop. Nick, Nickelodeon. Stop! Don't say that. I can't take it. Oh my God! Jesus, oh, Mary Joseph in heaven. <laughs> oh, all that. Oh, that. Oh, that. Hey, take it easy. That's the father. Bro! If I seek to see my daughter get recital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put the wagon down to fucking standing in my way! Bro! 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 Keep in mind this dance is only 90 seconds!
Get up, get up.